The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93X. You guys, it's opening day in baseball. I was a huge sports fan growing up. Loved baseball. Collected baseball cards for years. I was uh, going through my collection recently, and I realized that they're just pictures of dudes. <laughs> With their height and weight written on the back of them. Vaughn into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Baseball opening day. Showtime. Music has been taken out of this portion of the half ass Morning Show podcast for licensing reasons. You know what, Josh? Oh, wait a minute. We got a twin song here? Oh, yeah. Have you, you've heard this one. Yeah, I forgot. Pink hangover. Let's let it, uh, let it ride. You got the what? Baba Kama Climbing. Is that right? <laughs> That's the, what I heard. The Baba Kama the Climbing. The Baba Kama Climbing. <laughs> <laughs> You got the Baba Kama climbing tonight. <laughs> you got the Simba Zuma la la lu lao. Yeah, sing it, Josh. Josh, when you play the audio of that 1991 World Series, especially without warning, that's the kind of stuff that can get a guy my age crying his damn beautiful bedroom eyes right out. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm sitting here crying. Ah, uh, I don't want to do that no, to you. No, I was hoping to pump you up more no, than no, anything no. for the season. See that it's not. You know, it's not. It's not tears. And then get you vulnerable, and then take advantage of you later. What, Dana? <laughs> stop that. <laughs> Sorry, you sick it sometimes. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Obviously, they're not tears of sadness. They're tears of joy. And the funny thing about it is, if you sat there right now pumping all that '91 World Series audio, I would end up sitting here crying. The odd thing is, as soon as it was over, I'd say, play it again! (laughs) I want to hear it again and again and again and again. I've got more for Shaver when we start Shaver. Do you? Nice. A couple more for you. I watched the promo video that the Twins came out with uh, for today, and that even brought tears to my eyes. I was like, oh my gosh, I... I'm such a loser. It's a good reminder of just how much damn fun last season was. Yeah. You guys aren't fans. Me and Nick are season ticket holders. Oh. Are you season ticket holders? No, I you're wish, not. I wish I could afford that. I am I am game ticket holder, meaning one singular. You have one? Yeah. yeah. I don't even have that. I don't actually get any of my tickets. They all go to the family. That's yeah, nice I think you remember you. saying that last year. Yeah, they've never even invited me to one game. <laughs> it's a, it's a, the Christmas present the last few years. Oh, to, that's a cool. To the Do you family want to adopt and, me? I, you know, there's times I've wanted to. Please, uh, please tell me they've got to do a game on like Father's Day without you. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> What's the other '91 audio you have playing? Okay, no, don't tell me. All right, <laughs> you had to be there. You really did for 1991 or 1987. Welcome to the opening day edition of the '93 X Half Fast Morning Show. Always a special day. Some of you don't care for baseball. You're bad people. That's true. You know, I uh, yes. I was looking through a bunch of clips of comedians and um, you know late night guys, and it's all the same jokes about falling asleep. Or if you need help falling asleep, watch a baseball game. You're saying they're yuck, boring. Yuck, and yuck. You don't hear that as much anymore, though. That was some older stuff. Yeah, they've they worn that it joke up out. And, yeah, everybody's made that joke. They've worn that. Yeah, everyone's made it. I love my dad's joke when he calls NASCAR nap car. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> cute. he's cute like that. Yeah. He certainly is. <sighs> but you got to help me out with something right away here on opening day. Um, so, you know, I look at my local newspaper, and it says, Twins Royals season opener today, 3 o'clock, televised on BSN. You got your Pablo Lopez getting the nod as the Twins uh, season opening starter and all kinds of other information. But then I read an article last night that says if you live in Minnesota, don't plan on watching the game today on TV unless you subscribe to Direct TV. I thought I thought this was over. I thought there was a a, a, an agreement on this stuff. Well, I was confused as well. I saw that article and then I looked on the Twins website and it says it's on Bally Sports North. It's on Bally Sports North, but the only services that get that anymore are like Xfinity. 
and oh, okay, Directv then I'm good. You're good. Yeah. You're yeah. fine. You're fine. Just problem a lot of... over. No, no, no. The problem is over. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if anybody yeah. else can't so watch it. <laughs> other providers don't have it? Not not many of them know, and you used to be able to get it on like Hulu Live and stuff. That's no longer the case. But I mean, if you have Charter or something like that, you can't get it. I don't believe so. I know a lot of people because there was all this talk that it was going to finally be a, a usable streaming service. You could just stream the game on whether it be Amazon or what what have you. But for a lot of people that have cut the cord, they no longer have the cable, the Direct TV. So there's a lot of hope this season that with the Bally Sports North deal ending last year that you'd be able to stream the games in a, more, in a more easy fashion. You're talking about internet people. Yeah. So this doesn't apply to people who have cable television? No, you're fine. So if you do have Charter, you're okay. I, I Don't quote me on that. I've never had Charter. I'm not used to that one. I'll look, though. All right, so I guess I don't know where we stand uh, yeah, I don't, on, I don't, on, on this. I thought it was back to normal. So did I. But then this article yeah, pe- says, if you live in Minnesota, don't plan on watching it live on television unless you subscribe to Direct TV. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Hmm. Folks are texting in saying that their provider is has BSN and will be showing the game. All right. What, I, what made me nervous is, of course, last night I'm doing the right thing. I'm watching the entirety of the Timberwolves game. I know none of you have any idea what that experience is like. But I'm watching the entirety of the Timberwolves game. And uh, I noticed that they weren't running any promos for today's Twins game. So then I thought, well, what the hell's going on around here? I I guess we'll find out at 3 o'clock. I I don't understand most of this. I didn't follow all those stories for the last six, eight months about how, oh, oh my God, Bally Sports North, this and that, and cable and internet. uh, So I I guess I'll find out at 3 o'clock. It's confusing. It would be really (laughs) weird for opening day to not be able to watch the baseball yeah, game. I, I, Even I, when I was in the cooler, Josh was there with me. When we were in the cooler, we'd watch the baseball game. We had a riot. Yeah. And I, you would reenact games for all of us I at would. times. Very passionately. A, a World Series. Yeah. The 1963 World Series, to be exact. Go all right, ahead. I have an update from Magic playing Machinist Jesus. Uh, he said it will not be on Charter because Charter is not any charter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was not aware of that. I am an Xfinity customer. So we've got a guy that knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So you were right, Dana. It won't be on charter. <laughs> <laughs> not going to be on charter. Can you watch that on a Northwest airline? Yeah. Is that possible? <laughs> a hotel room? I understand they're airing it at Woolworths. Oh, are they really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Over at Woolworths. Yeah, I saw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably watch it on one of the many TVs at your local radio shack. Yes. Ah. Or Circuit City. There you go. The opener. And oh, uh, let me see. Uh, where's my thing? My uh, prize sheet information. Okay, we don't have any twin home opener tickets. Maybe we'll have some more next week. We were giving them away earlier this week. It was a lot of fun. I believe this weekend... Ooh. You can win uh, Twins tickets uh, oh, Twins tickets all weekend. Ooh. Something like that. By next week, they'll be having the home opener. Baseball, hot dogs, beer drinking, the whole works. I love hot dogs. I'm a brat guy. I like both. There's nothing wrong with a yeah. brat. Right? I, I, I don't think big enough for both. I don't feel the need to choose one or the other. You know, I, I love them. I love them both. Like a good chicken apple brat. Oh, yeah. Yuck. Jesus Tofu Christ. Brat. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Dana got offended. Uh, Dana was nice enough to give me his old grill. Yeah. Um, and it's a very nice grill. It was awesome. And I cleaned it. You know, I just, because you said you hadn't used it in a while and you were, like, what the hell? Why would you clean it? And I jokingly said, well, because you probably cook tofu burgers on there or something <laughs> like that. And you were very offended. <laughs> I wouldn't eat a tofu burger. How you, dare you? you? How dare you come at me like that? You quickly calmed down. Yeah, I did. I love hot dogs, or as an ex-co-worker of mine, my, my, uh, I'll get there. As an ex-co-worker of mine used to call them, oh, and this drove me effing crazy. I, I, I shouldn't have been so violent with this guy. But after a while, I had to. He was from the East Coast, and, and I'm, so that set me off right away. The minute I met him, I, sa- I said to myself, I'm not, there's no way he and I are ever going to be good friends. He's from the East Coast. We worked together for a few years, and he called them hot dogs. And, oh, I, and, 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 I, and I finally snapped. I mean, absolutely came uncorked at him. For yeah, that. That's funny you said snapped, because I was picturing a quarterback saying hot 
you know, or something like that. It, it made hot me dogs. nuts. Hot, do- hot dogs. Hot dogs. Not hot dogs. Hot dogs. And I gave him a good beating for that. I love them. I had one for lunch yesterday. I did. It's one of the world's most perfect foods. It's got everything. Beaks, feet, lips, a-holes. It's got everything. <laughs> I went to Portillo's yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah. Still never been Yum. there. I haven't either. And oh. I mean, so do they serve anything other than hot dogs, or is it just all hot dogs, baby? No, they got uh, hamburgers, Italian beef sandwiches. Did you hear what he said? I did. Hamburgers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that place Hamburger. is fire, Wapple. Yeah. Yeah, it's does it good. slap? Because I'm not going if it doesn't. It does slap. It does. Does yeah. it F? Yeah, they got Chicago dogs. So you got your sport peppers, your onion, mustard, relish. Do they pickle. have that skyline chili? Oh. Maybe. Maybe. They got Ooh. hamburgers. Hamburgers. <laughs> uh, the online gambling site Bet US. Anybody uh, lost any rent money on that uh, website yet? No. no. no I, I'm not I, not big gambler. Uh, I, mean, me I only use Underdog Fantasy. Of oh, course. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The online gambling bet site. No, I I, I, I'll say, I said it right the first time. The online gambling site BetUS is looking to hire a wiener connoisseur. Go ahead with your fifth grade jokes on the text message. Ah, oh, great. Here comes the text on my mom. Thanks. <laughs> I heard my mom was taking quite a pounding on social media yesterday. That's not good. What the hell was going on? Yeah. What? Wait, it was your birthday. I know. What the People hell? People were talking about pounding my mom oh, on social man. media. Really? <laughs> What the hell's the matter she, with she's this? She's a Catholic. You know, she's a good Catholic woman. She is. She raised a great son. And get, apparently she gets around. Uh, <laughs> I give the old man more credit for Josh turning out the way he did. Then. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's the matter with this listener? Just texted in and said, I like making hot dogs into hot logs. What's the matter Ew, with you? I Yuck. hate you. Don't say stuff like that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's gross. It's opening day, man. Come on. Although uh, many years ago, me and my pal Curtis, we were sitting around. He went off and he fetched uh, some Subway sandwiches for the two of us, right? And we both ate a Subway sandwich and then he went in my house and then he came back out of my house and sat by, uh, back down next to me and he said, foot long in, foot long out. <laughs> oh. And I hated him for that. Yeah. All right, so the... Uh, <laughs> Bet US is looking to hire a wiener a connoisseur. They're looking for somebody or another to go ahead and visit all 30 major league ballparks and check out the hot dogs. Oh, if they insist. <laughs> I always hear that uh, the Dodgers have a great hot dog. Oh, apparently. here we freaking go. Oh, God. This is, not, this is another situation where it's not your fault, Wapple. I know. I know. It's not. Sorry. <laughs> Ever since I was a freaking kid. Ever since I was a friggin' kid, well, this friend of mine has been talking about the Dodger dog. You know, you gotta have a Dodger dog. <laughs> it's kind of like the folks who say, you know, you think you've been to a football game, you really haven't until you go to where? Lambo. Lambo Field. It's that douchey, what's the word I'm looking for, Josh? Uh, elitist. You're elite, yep. Yes. Well, what, what is it about a Dodger dog? Nothing. So the dude finally yeah. went to L.A. and had a Dodger dog, and he said it was just a regular freaking hot dog. <laughs> Aren't they foot let down? I don't know. I, Who I cares? It might be foot it's lungs. a 10-inch wiener. Know. So that's okay. according to Wikipedia. That's, so that's the difference? It's just like a larger it's a longer dog. Right. Yeah. But this one buddy of mine, oh, do you, uh, yo, you, do, would you have a hot dog at the Twins game? Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, you should probably. What Next week, I'm going to go try a Dodger. D- <laughs> All right. <laughs> They, for whatever reason, they, uh, you know, it's in your head, maybe, but they're, they are better at the ballpark. No, oh, Nice yeah. hot dog sandwich, you know, on a mm-hmm. summer day. Yeah. Here's the deal with <laughs> this. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I like to eat it sideways, too. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> Here's the deal with this gig. You'll get to go ahead and eat dozens of hot dogs. You go into all 30 major league ballparks, including Dodger Stadium, so you can have your friggin' Dodger dog. <laughs> But they don't really care how good they are. They don't care if they taste good. They, don't, they want to measure. They want you, if you take the gig, if they hire you for the gig, they want you to measure each weenie to see which club has the biggest and the smallest. 
I mean, I, I don't they know, know what, what they're doing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> trying to make fun of teams now. This is a dick joke. It's got to be. Is one, yeah. This is one. Yeah, I think long this is... play dick joke. Yeah, it has to be. Why are they just? If, if it's a joke, why are they just doing length and they don't do girth too? They are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. Okay. Uh, oh my, my no, bad. Okay. 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 No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry again. Well, well, you're used to getting your head chewed off, I think. So you're yeah. apologizing. We don't even need to. Yeah, He's like the skittish dog. Those, yeah, I'm one of those dogs that was beaten as a puppy. <laughs> oh, jeez. I told you that the Dodger dog tantrum I had was not your fault. Yeah. You were yeah. just you just you just brought it up. That was it was bad luck on your part. Okay, so this is a dick joke. They say once you get your hands on uh, a ballpark wiener, no matter where you are, you measure it. Girth, length, and weight. Weight. So now you got to bring a scale into the ballpark. I bet they provide it. They probably give you something or another. I mean, show show high Otani would definitely bet that they provide it, but I also <laughs> bet they provide. It. So, okay. So we dudes are so obsessed over our own penis size; it's trickled down to where we're living vicariously through ballpark hot dogs. <laughs> and bet bet us is is in on the joke i i don't know it's not a full-time gig but they also uh don't expect you to buy all those wieners on your own they well wait a minute maybe you are you are responsible for buying the wieners they get you game tickets they cover your travel this is a lot of money oh, to spend yes. <laughs> See, I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't know what's going on here, because that's a lot of money for a dick joke. Well, they're getting all kinds of attention for it. Oh. I mean, that's it's the advertising. So yeah, the advertising. exactly what they want right yeah. now. So that that's you think that this is enough attention to cover the cost of one giant dick joke. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, think about it. If you were to run a commercial on this radio station, that'd be like $13, $14. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, they're making it up on all kinds of morning shows everywhere. They get you tickets to the game. They cover your travel, and you get twenty five hundred bucks spending money. They'll also toss in a five hundred dollar gift card to MLBShop.com, so you can get a lid or a jersey. Oh. They also get you a subscription to MLB.tv, whatever that is. You can apply on their website between now and April eighteenth to be the Bet US Wiener Connoisseur. You're all over America, going to all these ballparks. Uh, you need to write him up a, uh, what would a grown person call it? A review? Well, they're no. calling it a short pitch. Oh. You yeah. know, base, baseball. Baseball yeah. reference. A, little on uh, there. A, a, a short pitch for why you're the most qualified person oh, to measure and weigh wieners. I don't know how you explain that side gig to your boss. So I guess you might have to be retired or a trust fund baby who doesn't need a real job. I bet they get a college kid, something like that. Right. Yeah, somebody that's on social media quite a bit. Oh, I yeah. Bet. I bet MLB.TV has the Twins game. The, not if you live here locally. Oh. Mm-hmm. Blackout, <laughs> blackout restrictions. It's just ridiculous. You know. <laughs> hey, Xfinity, I, I looked at my TV guide for Xfinity, and it does have it on on there. What's the, that? What the, are we talking about now? The baseball game the today. The baseball game. I looked on the TV guide for Xfinity that I have, and it does show that it's going to be live. Yeah, it'll, right. it'll be there. It'll be there. So there you go. What a gig. Yeah, no kidding. To be the wiener eater at all the ballparks. Although I wouldn't like all that traveling, but... That part would suck. Yeah, that part would But totally. some people would love it. You know, I mean, right. It'd be mm-hmm. perfect for some folks. And also, I mean, a lot of baseball fans, they have that goal of checking out every single ballpark and checking them off the list as they go. Oh, yeah. my such mother, a dream. Again, what a, what a, trust fund babies is who they are. <laughs> yeah. Trust fund Not necessarily. Babies. It's retired. My, my mother-in-law is one of those people. Uh, she has gone to, I don't know, I, I should ask her how many she's been to. Biggest baseball fan I know. Her nice. and my stepdaughter. Absolutely loved it. My, my stepson loved it, too. He's more of a hockey guy, but big baseball guy. So, yeah, I think uh, I, I could see... I'm not being dirty here, but I could see my mother-in-law being interested in something like this. Uh-huh. Getting the tab picked up to mm-hmm. go complete her mission. That's a hell of a deal. Hell of a gig. Yeah, there's varying information on whether or not the game will be on TV. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody Again, knows. Well, just... I would say overwhelmingly people are saying you can watch it. 
All yeah, right. you can watch if your cable provider gets Bally Sports North like you did last season. You'll be able to watch it this season again too. Uh, again, I'm I'm content just to wait till three o'clock, I guess, instead of going <laughs> back and forth and you know. Have your fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, big fine, big money, no whammy. I'll, I'll live one way or the other. They're so. really appeasing baseball fans, aren't they? Let's see. Let's get rid of the beloved Dick Bramer, <laughs> and then let's make it so you can't even watch a game. Yeah. Let's make it more difficult than ever to watch. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I would say overwhelmingly, like, here's widespread panic, Jesus. Twins are on Bally Sports North all year. Uh, your extension was signed, just not Bally's Plus. Can't watch it okay. there. All right, I'm good with that, whatever all that means. I had a gig years ago that was... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it even more of a cakewalk than being the hot dog connoisseur. Biggest cakewalk gig I ever had was when I worked for the school district in my hometown. Being the Zamboni driver at the hockey rink uh, made me an employee of the school district because I worked at the high school. And in the off season, when uh, hockey wasn't happening, I was a building supervisor, I think was the, the title. And all I had to do was go to one of the junior highs every day. Uh, well, night. And um, my only responsibility was to unlock the building, walk in. There'd be a sheet of paper there uh, in for me that would say uh, room 112 and room 315. I was uh, in charge of going to those rooms, unlocking those doors and opening them. And uh, that was for, say, a cooking gl- class, a nighttime cooking class or a nighttime I don't know what a basket weaving class, right? Yeah. And then old folks would come in and uh, do whatever they were doing in the cooking and basket weaving class while I fell asleep in a chair and watched television. And then when they were done with their classes, I had to lock the building back up and I left. Those are my only responsibility. That was the best best gig I ever had. That's did you, beautiful. Did you ever get free food? No. Oh. Free food? How does that come into play? If they cooking had a cooking class. class. Oh, no, I'm, no, no. I see where you're going with that. No, I never cared about that. Well, that would have been a nice perk, too. I suppose, yeah. I mean, if they had a, I don't know, here's the fried rice that we made, yeah. and, uh, you know, I don't know. I'd I get down. I, sure, but no. that Granny fried rice? Yum. Granny? What's granny fried rice? What does that mean? The grandma made it? Granny fried oh, rice? Oh, I oh. Oh, never I thought, heard that. I thought it won an award because it was musical in some way. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy who wants to go take a cooking class with my wife. His wife! Oh! I mean, his wife. God dang it. Uh, what are you talking about now? I screw myself over you all do. the time. You almost had it. Yeah, you outed yourself again. You know a guy, you, who wants to go take a cooking class with your wife. With his wife. With his wife. Your yeah. wife. I've always wanted to do that too, Josh. It looks like a lot of fun. Well, I don't know how fun it looks necessarily for me, but I I want to learn how to. Well, I, I got to learn how to do something. What's the problem? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what has you drawn problem? to this? Just because you want to learn how to cook? Yeah, I'd like to learn how. Oh, stop it. You know what, Josh? You do enough for your family. On, like on Sundays, I could I could get up, put an apron on, and just uh, make food for the week. Something like that. Freeze that stuff. When's someone yeah, in your no ungrateful prep. family going to do something for you? I've given up on that idea. <laughs> the guy... Although, can I, can I tell you? Uh, this warmed my heart. My, uh, my oldest, he dropped off all my favorite foods. All my favorite foods... Uh, yesterday for my birthday. Oh, for your birthday. Nice. Unfortunately, it's for the neighbor's house. He doesn't come over very often, so we, he wasn't sure where we lived. So, But once we <laughs> figured that out, I thought that was a sweet gesture. I think you need to find, you need to give yourself some downtime. It's cute that you want to learn how to cook, but you're the breadwinner. You handle all the house stuff. You got three able-bodied children, but yet you still snow plow the driveway and shovel the sidewalk. Which I, I, I enjoy. You don't need to be... No, you don't enjoy that. <laughs> I still like it. You don't need to be going to a cooking class. Well, I, I'm I tempted. Need... I'm tempted to learn how to do it. Yeah, and then you get some some really good food at the end. Especially, so. uh, I say it every year, I want to learn how to grill well. You know, I can grill where it's okay, but I want to learn how to do it. They offer those specific kind mm-hmm. of classes where you can learn how to grill. No, yeah, I, I want to do that, but I'm an, I'll am feel uh, pretty, um, what what would the word be? Uh, effeminate. If I go in there and I don't know how to grill. Oh. I think they, they judge you. 
Yeah. Uh, all you're, that. You're, you all, ever going to see that guy again? <laughs> all that stuff yeah, is next so weak at it, the, no, the other class. <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff is so friggin' overrated. Electrical appli- apprentice Jesus said that uh, he's done cooking classes with his wife, and they're pretty fun. Plus, you get to eat at the end. I do like to eat. I, I just, I just wish that you would give yourself a little more free time. That's all. Well, you know how, you, like, friends of yours that enjoy partying. Right, like me, I love party. Mm-hmm. You know how they'll say, uh, "I am never drinking again," or "I'm going to slow my drinking down," and they never do. Right, that's going to happen with this cooking class. I'm never, mm-hmm. I'm never going to go through with it. <laughs> they, they are crazy expensive too. And I, well, I was. That's why I was looking them up, and I can't believe how expensive they are. It's I, like a hundred dollars per person. I'll just have to go to Whoa. YouTube. Yeah, yeah YouTube you University. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Julianne cut. Now, Mouse and Jesus, Jesus wants to know if it's really a ride-along I'm going to tomorrow or is it a cooking class? No, it's a ride-along. <laughs> oh, Josh, I just thought of something. Uh, my boyfriend, when he worked at um, the job before he has now, he was considered a grill master. He was on, like, the grill team. He could probably teach you how to grill if you want. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested in that. Uh, again. Uh, the Wapple, you know, I've, I've thought about asking you. You know how to cook. Oh, that's easy. Stop it. <laughs> I can, yeah, I, I went through every single cooking class that I could in high school. You yeah, light the coals, you put a friggin' burger on it, you flip it a few times, you put it in your mouth. That's Stop about, it. That's about what I do. Stop <laughs> it. This stuff, this stuff means nothing to anybody. I uh, used to, well, I worked at a couple of restaurants, but all I did was, like, I'd make salads, and uh, I'd prep food for the real chefs, and then I'd whittle giant organic carrots <laughs> into very realistic orange penises. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're on cold side again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All I did, I learned how to cut real fast. <laughs> Knock yourself out, but if you ask me, I think you should spend a little more time just on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> See, Pornhub or cooking <laughs> class? That classic decision that's so tough to decide. Is that a classic decision? <laughs> yeah. You know, you could probably combine the two and they probably have a porn about a cooking class. Well, sure you they know, do. some of people have said on OnlyFans you can find cooking stuff that's not necessarily like nobody's naked or anything oh, really but we've talked about it before where i thought only fans was all porn but people mm-hmm. are saying no it's, it's more than that you can watch somebody cook can i tell you about the greatest day at my cake gig as a building supervisor for the uh, school district in my uh, hometown one day i had to work at the grade school i don't know what it was same same gimmick i walked into the grade school i unlocked a couple of doors because some dorky people like yourselves we're gonna learn how to grill or whatever the hell was going on right <laughs> so i unlocked a couple of doors and i had a, you know five six hours to do nothing until these people left and i walked into the grade school gymnasium and i hadn't been in a grade school gymnasium obviously since i was a grade school kid a good you know 12 years or something at this point in my life and the uh, how do you call it the floor was carpeted Okay, but yet it still had all the lines painted on it for basketball <laughs> and bad. Maybe have you seen this? Have you, have you, no. This is a long time ago now. This is twenty-five years ago or more. Carpeted like real uh, short carpeting, but they had all the lines painted on it for basketball and badminton. And I thought, wow, what the hell is this? And then I look, and since it's a grade school, the basketball hoops are at about seven foot tall. Yes. And then I look in the corner, and they've got a basketball, but it's smaller than what adults would use because it's a grade school. And it was like a light from above shine down upon me. And I said to myself, for the next five hours, I am Akeem Olajuwon. <laughs> <laughs> and I grabbed that mini basketball, and I'm just, what the? Behind the back door. I'm still a young guy at this point. I'm dunking and hanging from the rim, and adults are walking by watching me do this. I mean, I'm straining the backboard. I thought I was going to break it, but I just had this five-hour basketball slam dunk competition with myself in the great. It was, and I was getting paid to do it. That That's does sound adorable. fun. Paid. To, I'm I'm soaked in sweat by the end of the. The cooking class people are coming out, and I'm just soaked in sweat. Uh, like, what do you got, the uh, malaria or something? No, I was having a dunk competition with. <laughs> I was I, want, I do want to get our our, our hoop kind of sucks, so I want to get one that's adjustable. Mm. And I'd love to get one where you can dunk on it. Oh, it's you know, so it's fun. Where it gets low enough, and so actually, our our hoop, I when I 
first moved in the neighborhood, I had met one of my neighbors, and I was like, hey, uh, why don't you go ahead and dunk on that thing, thinking I was joking, and he dunked on it. Oh. Now, his I found out later on his brother's a professional athlete, so I don't think it counts. Yeah, I didn't no. realize no. that. Nobody told me that ahead of time, so he's also got some athletic skill, but I thought, <laughs> son of a bitch, why'd I have to bring that up? Uh. <laughs> yeah, get one of those you can set at about six feet, dude, and, and then say goodbye to your Achilles tendon. Or yeah, you, you, I'll probably kill myself. But it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. worth it. Or Josh right. would roll his ankle with his sideways driveway, you know, that incline. Yeah, that's the problem. It's yeah. a little too steep. Yeah, yeah, that's dangerous. We got to get moving here on opening day. You're a terrific crowd. By damn, uh, Randy Shaver will be in at 730, of course, to talk about the Twins and every damn thing else that's going on, because there's a lot going on. We'll be right back on the half Ass Morning Show. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the Just Capital seal. Bank of America is ranked number one for ongoing commitment to their workers with initiatives like Sharing Success, which awarded 97% of their teammates additional compensation, nearly all in stock. This is the program's seventh consecutive year, awarding more than $4.8 billion in total. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. Sometimes it's just the little things, Josh, that can uh, keep you going or get you going. I agree. On a, you know, on a nothing day. Isn't that how they used to set up the uh, Mary Tyler Moore show? She boy, can, you're going back. I don't remember something about uh, she could make a. Someone uh, look up the Mary Tyler Moore Show uh, theme song lyrics. Why my folks used to watch the heck out of that she show. She could take a take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile. Where I'm going with this is I got a text message from Crazy Fish Guy Jesus. He wants to give a shout out to the Plymouth Home Depot. He said their sign out front is missing the M today and it made his day worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, I think that would put a smile on most everybody's face. She can put a smile upon your face. I swear to who, God, there's who, something who there. Who can turn the world on with her smile? She can turn the world on. Thank you, Wapple. Who can take a nothing day and suddenly, suddenly make, make it, it all seem worthwhile? worthwhile? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants! All right, on with the stupid news. Have any of you ever been romantically involved with a plumber? No. Mm -mm. No. I can totally understand why someone might date a plumber. They're a sexy group of people. Mm Mm-hmm. Skilled. Plumbers are. Butt crack. But be careful if you get involved with a plumber. A gal jumped in on that awful, awful, awful social media. A gal jumped in the mix there to tell her story of plumber love gone wrong. And this wasn't her fault, at least from what I, what I understand. It sounds like she just had the misfortune of dating a plumber dude who also happens to be one of those types who can't handle getting broken up with, the type that feels the need to take some kind of little pissy childlike revenge when a relationship ends. Every group has one or two of those, even plumbers, who are usually very cool people. So the gal broke up with the plumber dude. They even live together, don't you know? What was that now? I was going to say, what do you do to the water? Well, just hang on, Wapple. They even live together, these two. But she broke up with him. And then one day she woke up, and her toilet was gone. 
<laughs> I'm taking this with me. Now, I don't think I'm a petty person, but sometimes I can appreciate the pettiness in others, and that's kind of funny. Yeah, that's good. That's but the I word. Like that. Petty. I imagine waking up for your, your your morning bathroom run. You're going to wait a minute. I swear there was a toilet here last night when I went to bed. <laughs> I, I would be... You know, I've, like you said, confused, uh-huh. but at the same time, I would appreciate the humor yeah. there. Well played. Yeah, what if you I'll be just, in the shower. What if you got absolutely hammered the night before? You wake up and you're just groggy and you're looking for the toilet. Oh, I thought there was one there. There's still a hole. <laughs> <laughs> true. Is this true? I got a text message from Raunchy Ron Check Jesus. It's the first I've seen that name. Welcome to the operation, if in fact you're new. Raunchy Ron Check Jesus. If you've been here for a while and I never noticed you, I apologize. He he's, says, he's actually changed his Jesus name. I don't know if you. Oh. Now it's Sticks Fingers in Your Duct Work Jesus, he put in the text. Stick Fingers in Your Duct Work yes. Jesus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Whoever the hell you are, is this true? Most plumbers, he says, have been in a relationship with other plumbers? Is that a. What do you mean? Is Maybe that one of those professions where they all kind of date each other? Get back to us. And and get a new Jesus name. It's been ten seconds since you changed the damn thing. Gal woke up one day after breaking up with her plumber boyfriend and her toilet was gone ski. So for a while, every time she had to make potty, she had to get in the car and drive over to her neighborhood Taco Bell and use one of their crappers. <laughs> that could get busy. <laughs> that would suck. So here's the whole uh, setup. Yes, John. Got a text here that said it sounds like this woman needs a trip to Home Depot now for multiple <laughs> reasons. Oh. <laughs> well, at least she she could uh, tables could turn on that one because she has to have a plumber come in. Maybe she starts dating that plumber. Turns out she's got a thing for plumbers. Yeah, plumber revenge. The whole story here says shortly after their breakup, remember they're living together. She went to lie down in her bedroom for a nap while he packed his bags. He's getting his stuff and moving out. And when she came to, her toilet was a goner. She wrote about this on that Reddit setup. She said, he's a licensed plumber, so he knew what he was doing. I won't lie, I've been laughing about it too. She saw, like Josh just said, she saw the humor in it. She felt obligated to explain why she broke up with the plumber dude to total strangers on Reddit. She said he's the cheapest mother effer I've ever met. Mm. He refuses to tip servers at restaurants because he says that's how they do it in Japan. Oh, I hate this guy a little. Sounds like she couldn't even get uh, Mario to help her much with the bills laying around the house. He was cheap as balls, according to this gal. So... Without her toilet in the house for a while, she had to run over to Taco Bell every time she needed to go pee-pee. But she managed to get in touch with another plumber, and now she has a brand new toilet for her to poop in. (laughs) And good for her. Social media dorks got a kick out of this one. There were all kinds of comments. Unfortunately, none of them were very funny. But there were all kinds of comments on this. Well, it was funny that I I noticed the same thing in the picture. He also took the toilet paper. Oh, you did too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Petty. Too funnier. Yeah, because she had a, a before and after picture, and the before, the toilet is there as is toilet paper. Afterwards, the dude took the toilet paper too. That's great. <laughs> That's messed up. Uh, a female friend of mine, she broke up with a boyfriend, and he took all of her light switches when he left because what? he had installed them. And so he oh, said, all right, I'm taking them. <laughs> he took all the light switches. Can you imagine? I put so much money into those light switches, and I installed them. They're mine. Well, if I could play amateur psychologist, I don't think it had anything to do with the money, Waffle. (laughs) Not a thing. Who is this now? This is Cab Scout Jesus, who has texted. 651-989-9393 is how you get a hold of us and and dump a cute message our way. Uh, Cab Scout Jesus says, the hottest girl I ever dated was a union plumber. Hmm. So damn hot, he says. Too bad I'm an idiot and I didn't act right. Ah, the one that got away, pal. This here is a fun story with a fun police video type of thing that goes along with it. Ashley, holler at me if we have this video up there on our poorly put together website. A derelict moron in Georgia stole one of those big fat ass 75,000 pound front loaders from a waste management facility. 
Oh, no, we do not. Well, what the did. hell is going on over there? I think you did yesterday. I get it. Oh, okay. Huh? Let me double check, see if I got it yesterday. I just sent it to you again. Dude stole one of those big ass front loaners, uh, loaders, front loaders from a waste management facility. What we used to call a, a dump. When I was a kid, I loved going to the dump with my dad. Do you guys have those trips? Yep. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Let's go to the dump. I love looking at all the old cars mm-hmm. and, and you know, a lot of the characters who worked at the dump were just disgusting, shady people, at yeah. least when I was a kid. More than a few times I remember my dad taking us And my dad knew all of them personally. I was, I was uh, fascinated by that. How do you know that guy? Just some gravelly old dirty dude. Like, hey, how you know? You know, that guy. I loved going to the dump. So, dude stole the front loader. There he went. Once he got in, there he went driving the big damn thing around town with the local police chasing his ass all the way. It sounds like the derelict was a disgruntled former employee of the dump. The workers at the dump tried to get him to get the hell out of the front loader before he swiped it, but he took off anyway because he's a little bitch. (laughs) There he goes. He stole Mm -hmm. it. The really cool part of the story, and like I said, there's police video of the cops kind of carefully chasing this idiot around town. I, I yeah, they they don't want to rush up on him because then he could crash into him with the front loader and hurt the cop or destroy the car. But they they're very they're very careful with characters like this, are they? Aren't they, Josh? Yeah, they have to be. Right. Okay. So the really cool part of the story is that a current employee of the dump got in his own front loader and he gave chase too along with the cops and that dude got to be the hero oh hell yeah isn't that awesome that's cool front end loader chase he, <laughs> it was he caught up with the derelict front loader and uh if you watch the video it's very clear the good guy was obviously the more skilled driver oh yeah by far yes the good guy catches the bad guy And once he did, the cops gave the good guy permission to flip the bad guy's front loader over with the bucket so they could pull him out of the damn thing and whoop his ass. (laughs) That's so fun. It's really cool to watch that video. I was going to ask you, when you watched that video, did a uh, corn commercial pop up in the middle of it? It scared the hell out of me. Corn? (laughs) The band? Like right in the middle of the video. Yeah. The The F is corn. (laughs) No, no, the that band, didn't happen. No. Yeah, all of a sudden they start playing their music and advertise their tour. It scared the piss out of me. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. If you're not expecting that for no, sure. No, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Just just to warn folks in case that happens to you. He, The good guy charges into the bad guy, again, both in a front loader, and he takes the bucket and flip, flipped them on his side so the cops could pull him out of there and beat his ass. Uh, the derelict ended up being a fella called Eddie Sanchez. He was arrested. It's a really fun video. It reminded me of the only time I bothered watching a Transformer movie where the vehicles battle each other. Mm-hmm. That's what it reminded me of. I'd love to learn how to operate one of these just for fun, but especially in case I ever have this opportunity to knock another one over. You know, the local cops here in town, I know we got a lot of cops listening. If any low-life puke bags ever steal a Zamboni and you need a highly skilled Zamboni pilot <laughs> to catch the prick and take him down, I'm your guy. That'd be cool. It's been many years, but back in the day, I was by far the best Zamboni pilot in the county. I'll play that role. I could also drive the balls off of a forklift. I'm just putting that info out there in case it's needed. Back in the day, Cubby, I could do a front flip uh, in a forklift. You could oh. flip? Yep. That's impressive. Dang. Actually flip. Yeah. With or without the jump? The jump? Yeah. What do you mean, the jump? Like, like do you take, need to go off a ramp? Is oh, what building you're it? No, I just yeah. get up to a high speed, I dig the forks into the ground, and I do a front flip. So <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I can ollie in a bobcat. Whoa. No, I can't. No. Dang. They bar- when I landscape, they barely let me drive that thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the foreman, he wanted to drive it. Yeah. He wouldn't let anybody drive. Makes sense. Now, we're up to my favorite story of the day. I hope you like it as much as I do. It's about a guy that caused all kinds of trouble in a town called Vancouver, Washington. 
But like most shady criminal assbags, he effed up and he got caught. But this was more dramatic than most. Dude ended up getting stuck way the F up off the ground. He's trying to, you know, make his getaway. Dude ended up getting stuck on a damn telephone line. Dangling off the line like a cat. It's hilarious. This is up on 93x.com. I guess he thought he was effing uh, Jackie Chan or something like that. Just for fun, I'm gonna, I, I gotta tell you the whole story because it's great. I'm gonna refer to this guy as Jagoff Chan instead of Jackie Chan. So Jagoff Chan ended up leading the cops on an hours long chase because he got all, all uppity. But it's such a great adventure. You know how Josh over there likes to go on ride-alongs with cops or anybody else for that matter? <laughs> yes. I know that. I want to go on a ride-along or a job shadowing, whatever, with Jagoff Chan. This guy gets it. This guy's fun. So here we go. This all went down last Saturday. First off, Jagoff Chan broke into a motor vehicle. He stole some stuff and he ran out of there. Then he swung by some poor kid's yard and stole the kid's bicycle. You got to admit, that's pretty funny right there. <laughs> stole the kid's bicycle. So now it, now Jagoff Chan is a grown man on a child's bicycle. Neighborhoods are chasing him down the street, but Jagoff Chan is too fast for him. Yeah. Eventually, he dumps the bike and he takes off on foot. Next up, Jagoff walks into a business of some kind. Punches a random dude in the chest <laughs> and takes the guy's cell phone. It's my cell phone now. I dig that. A chest punch. Don't like, see... we're, like we're on a grade school playground. Mm -hmm. That'd be confusing to get punched in the chest. Yeah, the other yeah, dude is saying, ouch. my stomach's just down here. <laughs> what the hell just happened? The dude and he takes his uh, cellular... It's like in Fight Club when he has the guy punch him. And he goes, you just punched me in the ear. Why'd you punch me in the ear? <laughs> So Jagoff Chan's next move was to go up on the roof of a building and he took to throwing bricks off the roof and down onto the sidewalk. <laughs> How crisis negotiators showed up to try to get the dude to come on down off the roof, but Jagoff Chan wasn't listening to him. But that's when Jagoff tried tight roping his way across the sky on a telephone line. That was when his day of excellence came to an end. He couldn't quite get her done. He ended up dangling from the line, legs swinging underneath him. The cops parked a fire truck under him and let him drop his carcass down into the truck before he fell and broke his neck. And now, the legendary Jagoff Chan, he sits in jail. But he'll be back. I see more hilarious adventures in his future. Oh, yeah, that's not a one-time thing. Maybe next time he'll, he'll skateboard into town with sparklers in each hand, and then he karate kicks a sixth grader at a bus stop, <laughs> and uh, he steals the kid's iPad, but he ends up getting stuck in quicksand or something. That's what I see in the future for Jagoff Chan. I love the part where he walks into a little kid's yard. The kid's like, hi! And he takes the kid's bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. He's pedaling his ass. You'll never get me, kid. Pushes the kid over just for good measure. That's a... That's a big day for one person. All in one day. All right, we're staying in the same general area here. Washington by God State. I hope this was a prank call, but it likely wasn't. It was likely just a really stupid person. A sheriff's department up that way in Washington. They got a telephone call a day or two ago from someone looking to hunt Bigfoot when they swung through the area. The moron wanted to know how to go about getting his hands on a Bigfoot license. <laughs> Isn't that just frustrating as hell? Yep. I get frustrated by such things. The Stevens County Sheriff's Office is the name of the joint that got the phone call. Yeah, it went to voicemail, I believe. The caller said they'll be coming into town in mid-April. Uh, he's a hunter, 
and he asked about the legality of hunting a Sasquatch. I guess uh, question number one was, is it legal to shoot a Sasquatch in Stevens County? And his second question was, is a regular hunting license enough to keep his Sasquatch hunt legal? He also said, of course, he will not hunt or shoot a female Sasquatch. Oh, that's nice of him. You can tell from a distance. Yep. And if the guy, uh, and then the guy closed out his message by saying, if he doesn't hear from someone today, he'll call back tomorrow. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. Cubby, I think I'd rather take my chances in a gunfight with a Mexican drug cartel than go hunting with this guy. Yeah, I I worry that this isn't a joke. I sure hope he's kidding around, but <laughs> if not, he's going to shoot you and eat your body. Yeah, yeah. he does He does you not have to, practice uh, hunter safety at all. Just put some Nerf bullets in there. That's all we can trust him oh, with. Oh, I bet he goes into the woods a lot with a partner and comes back alone, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather you just put me up against a drug cartel than go hunting with that guy. Oh, boss lady, she just said Sasquatch is a protected species and you're not allowed to hunt it. Oh, good to know. Well, that settles that then. That's unbelievable. Ah, for Christ's sake, I knew we'd end up in England before too long. Here we are. While we're talking about really stupid people. Well, I'll give this gal a break because it sounds like she's older than the damn hills. And she's English. An old lady over there spent an entire night tending to what she thought was a sick baby hedgehog. But in the end, all this old gal was looking at and looking after was a pom-pom from the top of a stocking cap. Oh, lady. Do you know what I'm saying to you? (laughs) (laughs) First off, does everyone know what a hedgehog looks like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it's blue, spiky, runs really fast. Sometimes coins pop out of it. You guys are... No, no, you're thinking of a video game. That's Sonic the Hedgehog. Looks a little different in real life. I was modeled after a real hedgehog. They do look like a damn little pom-pom type of a thing. Oh, yeah, the side-by-side photos, I mean, it kind of does look like a pom-pom. So the elderly asshole lady spotted what she... Well, this is interesting also. You can be driving around England and see a hedgehog on the sidewalk? Do we have those around town? I I don't believe so. I've never seen one. I haven't seen one either. Okay. Old lady spotted what she believed was an abana... An abandoned critter on the side of the road. She thought it was a baby hedgehog. She put it in a box and stared at it all night, waiting for it to show signs of life. Eventually, she drove on over with the thing. She drove over to the local animal rescue type of a joint. A wildlife rescue gal over there by the name of Janet said... I was a bit concerned. I took the box from her, took it to a separate room. I opened the box, and I thought, that's not a hedgehog. (laughs) Perhaps it's some other kind of fluffy creature. She poked on it, poked at it, and picked it up, and then she knew what it was. It was a friggin' pom-pom from the... I'm wearing a a stocking cap with a pom-pom on it. It's cold outside. Oh, yeah. She put it back in the box... And came out and said to the old lady, it's not a hedgehog. Here's the uh, English kicking in here. Uh, She told the lady, it's the bobble off the top of a bobble hat. So I guess in England they call this a bobble hat. Ashley, your hairstyle today is kind of like a pom-pom hat. Oh yeah, I've got it up in a bun. Very, very uh, (laughs) pom-pom-ish. There's hedgehogs in Minnesota that you can buy. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah. I'm not going to accidentally step on one while I'm walking through the woods. Doesn't look like okay. it. Okay. There's a few places you can buy yourself a hedgehog. It says here, the old lady who brought in the pom-pom that she thought was an injured baby hedgehog, the old lady was very embarrassed. Oh, I bet. And then she shuffled on out of the rescue with her box and her pom-pom thing in the box. 
If you're working on the rescue spot, do you say, no, it happens all the time? Or to make you, her feel better? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, second one today. Yeah, it's uh, no big deal. I would hate having to be the one to tell her. <laughs> that would be the nice thing to do. Word is the old lady never really got close enough to the thing to realize it wasn't living. She was being extra careful around it because she thought it was injured. And so she just shuffled out of the place. And the poor old lady's dog was put to sleep later that same day. <laughs> No. I had a feeling. I thought either the hedgehog or a random dog was going to go. <laughs> had to have her dog put to sleep later that same day. There's a couple people in the listening audience who have had hedgehogs as a pet. Wow. And uh, vertically challenged, she's just there. She's one of the people that had one, and they named it Sonic, of course. Yeah, Yeah, that was a trend going around for a while. People were obsessed with hedgehogs. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. That was I, a popular pet. I missed yeah. that. I missed that. Oh, yeah. I'm not necessarily somebody who knows all the new trends. I hadn't heard that one, though. We were pretty wrapped up at the time, Josh. I think we were pretty wrapped up in the hipster movement. You yeah, were, true. Yeah. We were drinking a lot of PBR, eating a lot of bacon, bacon. riding yeah. old-timey bicycles, growing old-timey mustaches, wearing clothes from the late 1800s. We looked like when Josh and I would stand together for photos, people thought the picture was taken on the Titanic. <laughs> Didn't you guys we were really a, into the old-timey hipster movement. Yes, Wapple. You guys had a tarantula as a pet? No, we had a... Uh, we had some iguanas. <laughs> Iguana on a leash. <laughs> a hairless cat. <laughs> oh, hairless cat. Yuck. No, no, no. We had a... Uh, uh, what What was the deal? Everyone was doing this for a while. A, uh, a house pig. What do they call those things? Oh, the, oh, the tea, tea uh, cup? Yeah, yeah. yep. Tea cup? Is that what they call it? Yeah, there's the tea cup. Yeah, place. we had a little piglet. A little pig. I also had I had a, a duty belt, like a police officer might have, and it was filled with hacky sacks. Oh, oh so good. you yes. never have too many. Just in case. Yeah, Alexa Bliss uh, got duped with one of those teacup pigs. Someone sold it to her as a teacup pig, said it was, and then all of a sudden now it's like 500 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's happened. I've heard that story from people. Yeah, for about two weeks, everyone was buying pigs. That was uh, Josh and I got involved. Okay, one more here. One more. We got to get out of the way. And this this is aggravating. Get ready, effing potheads. Uh, there's what they're calling a stoner eclipse on the way. Okay. <laughs> there's a regular eclipse swinging by planet Earth on April 8th. I think we talked about that a couple weeks ago. There's a regular ep- eclipse. It's going to be swinging this way on April 8th. And then, of course, a stoner's eclipse on April 20th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> even even Wapple, huh? You Good for you, Wapple. That one? Good for you. It's just, I can't get behind 420. Enough. No. Enough is enough, isn't it, Wapple? Yeah. It's like, um, oh, St. Pat, what is it? St. Patrick's Day, all the drinkers, they're like, uh, whatever. Yeah, right. The, New yeah, Year's Eve. Amateur night. Right. Oh yeah, New Year's Eve. Right. One, no, yeah. no, but you you were on the right track. All right. So uh, let me just get through this without my heart condition getting even worse than it is. Uh, this time around, okay, 420 is going to be something called a palindrome. Now, what that means, because I didn't know, uh, in case you don't know, is a word, a sentence, a verse, or even a number that reads the same way backward or forwards. So. 420 2024 if you read that backwards it's also 420 20 so uh, that kind of thing won't happen again for another thousand years and we're supposed to treat like that like it matters uh and the stoners are all like whoa right so you wouldn't even get behind that one waffle i mean that's kind of cool but i'd probably think about it for like 30 seconds be like all right move on that's because <laughs> you'd be pretty high yeah so <laughs> four i already forgotten so there you go no, people oh, oh, are saying teacup pigs are marketing scams. They're baby pigs. I did not know that. One more note on this. Palindromes. Palindromes can also be longer phrases or sentences, such as, Was it a car or a cat I saw? Mm. If you read that frontwards or backwards, it says the same thing. Was it a car or a cat? Another palindrome uh, saying, um, eaten ain't cheating. No, I'm, we'll be right back I on the Half Morning Show. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. People will come, Ray. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. Hello, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy, along with Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, Dick Vitale, Mel Allen, Dick Emberg, and Dr. Joyce Brothers. Inviting you to join us for this all-important ball game. Here's the pitch. Uh, There's no crying in baseball! Twins open a brand new season today, Cubby. Everybody's in the running for a World Series on opening day. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I like that. Says here they're going to start the ball game at 3 o'clock there in Kansas City. It'll be televised on Bally Sports North or not. We don't know. And Pablo Lopez is your opening day starter. We're going to talk up and down about this with Randy Shaver when he swings by here very shortly. The Wolves were able to sneak by the Detroit Pistons last night. The NCAA men's basketball tournament is back in business tonight. Pigs and Sharks play in St. Paul. Golden Gopher Dudes Hockey Club plays the University of Nebraska, then Omaha tonight in Sioux Falls, South Dakota as part of the 2024 NCAA tournament. So there's plenty going on. Uh, Real quick, earlier on, I was talking about my skill set when it comes to driving a Zamboni or driving a forklift. There was a time before I got involved in this miserable business that there was nobody better in town at the Zamboni or the fork. I mentioned I could do a front flip on a forklift. That's how skilled I was. A listener texted in and said, a front flip on a forklift, that's easy. Just drive it right out of an open dock door. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen it happen, and I don't recommend it. I saw this poor woman. She did a front flip with a Target cart coming out of Target, not realizing there was a curb. She went ass over tea kettle. Oh, no. Uh, There's just all her, everything she bought all over the place. Her purse exploded. Oh, Oh, that sucks. I wish I would have seen it. Uh, Well. It was too bad. I, I heard she had a nice oh, funeral. That is. <laughs> that took a turn. Awesome. And then her dog died. <laughs> Absolutely put, put, put awesome. Down. Yeah. Especially on the day when your dog has to be put to sleep. <laughs> well, it didn't have to be put to They just did. <laughs> Add insult to injury. Josh's news is coming up. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The Ed Milet Show showcases the greatest peak performers sharing their journey, knowledge, and thought leadership. This is one of the all-time best pieces of advice ever given on the show. Actor Rain Wilson. The number one thing that psychologists point to with young people of why they are struggling so much in this mental health epidemic is they don't have resilience. So how do you build resilience if you don't understand suffering itself? The Ed Milet Show is available on YouTube or wherever you listen. Half-assed morning show. 93X. We started to look at it. They identified a common thread that it involved the same vehicle, the same alleged defendant. A man has garnered himself a reputation as a bit of a ladies' man for nailing lots of random women in the Salt Lake City area. That's how you do it, Cubby. <laughs> but unfortunately, he was nailing them with his car. Oh. These were predatory targetings shrouded in the shadow of accidents, said Salt Lake City County District Attorney Sim Gill, who obviously has a way with words. August 22nd, a white vehicle pulled up next to a 36-year-old woman. Witnesses said as the woman began to run away, the vehicle sped up and hit her, causing her to fly over the car, which immediately sped off. God dang. The woman told police the driver had asked her repeatedly to get into the vehicle. She refused and began to walk away when she was hit. Then February 24th, witnesses told police a 50-year-old woman and her 16-year-old daughter were hit. When officers reviewed home security footage, they found a white Toyota Avalon driving down the street three times before hitting the mother and daughter. Four days later, police responded to a hit-and-run where two women were walking near an intersection where they were hit from behind by a white sedan. 
A review of home security footage in that case showed the same white Toyota Avalon. As we were almost done crossing, the car came out of nowhere and hit us turning right. We didn't hear any like brakes, screeching. All we were able to see is that it was a white Toyota. I'm really just hoping that this guy can go away for a long time. Then March 11th, two women were walking in a crosswalk when their crossing light turned green. One woman said she observed a white car driving fast when she heard the vehicle hit the woman behind her. Witnesses told police the white sedan had approached the woman at slow speeds as the two were walking, which creeped them out. Witnesses also told police the light was red for the white car when it picked up speed and intentionally drove in the direction of the two women crossing the street. March 13th, officers found the man's Avalon at a park with him inside. When interviewed about the crash, he first told police he may have let the vehicle, or excuse me, lent the vehicle to one of his friends, but later stated, yeah, it's mine. I don't let anyone drive. <laughs> so this guy admitted it was him. Yeah, he was just running over ladies for no reason. This guy's like he's, he's like some type of bang. sick uh, homicidal maniac. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, okay. nobody was killed. Did I you mean, say, unbelievably, nobody was killed. Yeah. Did you say at one point or another he ran a lady over and then asked her to get in the car with B- him beforehand? Before oh, beforehand, yeah. I was going to say that's one no confident and, guy right there. She said no, and that's how he responded. I'll be dipped. A Google Street View driver who led police on a 120-mile-per-hour chase before crashing the Google camera car into an Indiana creek was handed a one-year suspended jail sentence Monday. 37-year-old Coleman Ferguson appeared to have been mapping areas outside Indianapolis July 31st when a cop spotted the Google vehicle about 5 p.m., hitting speeds at about 120 miles an hour. The high-tech vehicle had several 360-degree cameras mounted on a tall antenna and was wrapped with a vinyl skin carrying the Google and Street View logos. With a cop in pursuit, Ferguson refused to stop the Google car. After passing from one county to another, he lost control of the vehicle, drove through a guardrail, and went airborne before landing in a creek. He was then handcuffed and taken into custody. At the time of his arrest, residents of towns there uh, that he had been mapping complained of Street view cars recklessly speeding through their neighborhoods. Is that right? Yeah, some were saying he definitely was traveling over 100 mile, miles an hour before the cops even caught him doing that. What, is he just trying to get his job over with qu- as quickly as possible? I don't know. He's, all he's got to do is kind of drive around town and, right? He just goes, I think that'd be fun. Yeah, me yeah, too. It sounds like... I always I, get excited when I see him. Me too. I was yeah. just going to say, I feel like such a dork. But I'm like, it's like the adult version of the ice cream man. Yep. <laughs> Dude, you nailed it. Yeah. I was going to say the exact same thing. You I've seen get, it twice, you, and I thought, oh, I'm looking at a celebrity right uh-huh. now. You get pumped when you see the Google car. It's stupid, but yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I fully admit, I get embarrassed at how excited I am when I see that thing. A man arrested last Wednesday in Merritt Island, Florida, is accused of pointing a laser at a Brevard County Sheriff's Office helicopter. 33-year-old Jonathan Cross pointed a laser multiple times at the Sheriff's Office's star Uh, the Sheriff's Tactical Air Response Helicopter. The incident put the helicopter pilots in harm's way and impacted their ability to assist deputies on the ground who were attempting to find a missing juvenile. Luckily for us, the tactical officer that was in the uh, helicopter with him is a pilot as well, so he was able to take control of the aircraft for the period of time that the pilots had to wait for his vision to clear back up. The flight crew was able to pinpoint where the laser had came from, directing deputies to an apartment where Cross met them at the door. Are they ever going to stop doing that? No. In helicopter news, a man in India customized a family car to look like a helicopter that he called a car copter. Acting on a dream of having a car resembling the concept of a helicopter, the man welded a helicopter's rotor blade onto the car's roof and attached the tail to the trunk. Does it work? Uh, no. Where does he go with it? Uh, supposedly, the car was impounded. It looks pretty uh, sweet. Yeah, I think the cops took it from him. I can see the vision. A St. Paul man who admitted to making a pipe bomb and detonating it on the city's east side in June, damaging two vehicles, was sentenced to 360 days in the workhouse and five years of probation. The 46-year-old told police the bomb was intended for the vehicle of a man he was livid with because he broke into his home, desecrated his father's ashes by pouring them on the ground. Investigators said he admitted to building the pipe bomb, lighting the fuse, and tossing the explosive device near the Ford Ranger he believed was was the man's truck, But it wasn't. It was the wrong truck. According to the complaint, officers responded to the area just after 1 p.m. on the day of the incident and saw burn marks on the asphalt between two vehicles and then found a pipe with a cap on at the end. 
The wrong Ford Ranger had damage to the driver's side, and a Suburban's rear driver's side glass panel was shattered. I had a buddy in Anoka that drove a Suburban. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. After police arrested the suspect, he told investigators he'd made and deployed the pipe bomb, and it was intended for the vehicle of a 52-year-old man who he said had broken into his trailer and poured out his father's ashes. I can understand being pretty upset, but <laughs> took that a tad to the extreme and got the wrong person's truck. I remember when we first talked about the story shortly after it happened, the dude whose truck was blown up was pretty reasonable about it. <laughs> who was he? <laughs> kind of like, yeah, you know, it kind of sucks. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it happens. One out of three pipe bombs, you get the wrong truck. It, yeah, uh, it's, it's common these there's days. There's a lot of rangers out there, you know. Just mistake. a laid back dude, huh? Yeah. Word. A 21-year-old man faces charges after he allegedly rifled through two dozen cars in the Minneapolis Police Department's forensic garage and stole evidence. According to the criminal complaint, a Minneapolis police sergeant went down to the department's forensic garage Friday, March 15th, as part of a homicide investigation. When he got there, though, he found items scattered around the car that had previously uh, not been there. Surveillance footage shows a man inside the lot for about two hours, five days earlier. The video shows him rummaging through 21 cars and throwing items over a chain-link fence. He then climbed that fence, gathered up the items, and left. Two days later, video shows that he returned to the car and went through three, uh, to the lot, that is, and went through three different cars in the span of two hours. Documents state that he had also trespassed on the lot in early February. The la- then last Friday, the man was walking toward the fence in the impound lot carrying a box for a computer and a keyboard and a French horn. Hmm. The charges state that he ran through a hole in the fence, hopped in a car, fled from police, but eventually was stopped by an unmarked squad. The he ba- was doing all this and he was on his way to band practice? I don't know what was going on. I'm just going to donate it to a school. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office said the man's actions do have the possibility of impacting criminal cases. Again, he stole evidence. The forensics garage. I've never heard of that in my life. What about you? No. Do we have one of those here at 93X? Do we have a... uh, No. Don't. Okay. But we have a garage with some new vehicles in here. Is somebody stealing cars? Oh, really? Some new vehicles? Yeah, there's new vehicles back there. What's going on? A fight inside a Pennsylvania gas station has led to one person hospitalized, another in jail, and it started with someone throwing a banana. I would say it's definitely uh, an out-of-place occurrence. I've never heard of anything else kind of happening like that recently. Well, that's good. The incident occurred at a uh, gas station in Pittsburgh Monday when a customer threw a banana at one of the clerks, who then threw it back. The customer and staff began throwing multiple bananas back and forth, police said, before the customer made a pretty big mistake by punching one of the workers in the face. I say it was a mistake because the clerk responded by chasing the customer and hitting him several times in the head with a PVC pipe. Oh, God, da- oh, he, he's, is he dead? No, he's not dead, but he's not doing too well. He's can, in the can hospital. He, can he read as well as he could the day before? I don't know. Some, he, heard a, he heard a ringing and he answered a banana. <laughs> <laughs> His brains are scrambled. Uh, a PVC pipe up the oh, side geez. of the, yeah, that the em- noggin. The employee was arrested. Uh, they might charge the customer, I guess, depending on how he does there in the hospital. Yeah, hello, he said into yeah. the banana. Oh, I got it upside down. Sorry. Hello? Yeah, hello. (laughs) This damn thing won't stop ringing. A 49-year-old man caused the security alarm to go off at a Bourbon Street Blues bar and, excuse me, the Bourbon Street Blues and Boogie bar in Nashville early Monday, about three hours after bar close. When officers arrived, they noticed the man fully naked, walking away from them. Officers told him to sit down and talk, but he said he had a tummy ache and had to use the bathroom. And that's when the unfortunate cops observed the massive amount of feces on the man's leg. As they investigated, police learned the man soiled himself on the second floor after finding his clothes. He told officers he had four alcoholic beverages, then said he may have had nine, and then lastly said, okay, I had seven. (laughs) He was arrested for criminal trespass. What, he pooped his pants at the bar? Yeah, and I guess it was all over his leg, even after he got naked. That's embarrassing. A bus driver in England appeared to be practicing a form of safe sex Friday night. While standing with his pants down next to his double-decker bus, the English man appeared to be getting a BJ while still wearing his high-vis safety jacket. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) A police spokesperson said, We're aware of an incident of outraging public decency after an image was circulated on social media over the weekend, and we are investigating. The bus driver isn't the only person to have been recently busted in the act. 
A woman feeling frisky in Columbia was also busted when she decided to give her fellow oral sex in a public park in the middle of the day. This was Friday, March 15th. I like her style. People could see them as they walked past, but the couple didn't care. Mm, in both of those situation, situations, they just wanted to be seen. Well, the other guy, I mean, at least it was dark, if nothing else, but yeah. I don't know. It was pretty obvious when the person took a picture of what was <laughs> <Yeah>. happening. <laughs> but, you know, you make a good point. The guy's wearing a high-visibility jacket. That yeah. sure I stood mean, you, out. You would think that would cross your mind at least once. It's hot stuff is what it is. Sometimes you just, you just can't fight it. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura announced yesterday he's got time for weed. He's getting in the marijuana business, partnering with a Columbia Heights hemp company to produce Ventura-branded lines of edibles. I can finally announce that today, Governor Jesse the Body Ventura is the in the cannabis game. I can't tell you how truly amazing this feels, he wrote in the announcement. The partnership between Ventura and cannabis edibles company Retro Bakery will be known as Jesse Ventura Farms. A percentage of certain products' proceeds will be donated to multiple charities. What the hell took him so long? Yeah, well, he's maybe just uh, working it out. He said he had to... He vetted a lot of companies who wanted to partner with him, and he decided on those guys. Any Wapple, will you uh, try some of his Tegrity weed? No, oh, I'd be down. <laughs> his offerings. Sure. Give it a shot, maybe? Yeah, the, that used to be right next to my old house, too. Oh, you know exactly where that is? Yeah. Nice. The NCAA Sweet 16 games begin today on CBS, True TV, and TNT. And, of course, the uh, Twins have their season opener. Vince Vaughn, 54 today. A retired Army Air Defense Jesus texted in a shout-out to his wife, Alicia. Apparently, they had to put their dog Bailey down on Monday, sadly. So, obviously, it's a tough time for the family. Our best to you guys. This text says, can I get a birthday shout-out to my smoke show sassy wife, Angela? I've got this D wrapped in a box for you later. Oh, that's <laughs> romantic. Yeah, wrapped it up in everything, huh? She's sassy, he says. That's right. And a smoke show. Love, hubby, he goes on to say. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. Hey, pervert, what are you doing? On the half-assed morning show. He's to the line, and the left-hander delivers. Puckett swings and hits a blast. Deep left center, way back, way back. It's gone. The Twins go to the seventh game. Catch them all, Kirby Puckett. Base hit loaded, one out. Pena in a jam. The Twins are going to win the World Series. The Twins have won it. It's a base hit. It's a one nothing, 10 inning victory. We're going to win the Twins. We're going to That's all it took, Cubby. Look at me. Oh, wow. you teared up, didn't you? Uh, I love you. Wow. You so had to I. be there, right, Randy Shaver? So did I. I just teared up. <laughs> <laughs> God. Give hearing me one in my hear, lifetime. Hearing Jack Buck just gives me chills. Mm. It just does. You had to be there. She's that the was a season moment, opener. Man. Uh, was, was that a, a moment, moment or was that a moment, Randy? That Shaver? was a moment, man. That was. I, it's, it's hard to describe to people um, both '87 and '91 and what that was like when the Twins won Game se- Game Seven at home in both series. Just amazing. You're right. Um, and some people are going to say, "Wow." It didn't even take Dick Bramer on the phone to get these guys talking all day about 87 and 9. <laughs> no, uh, but doesn't take much. For me personally, 87 yeah. was incredible. Yes. But 91 was better because it went down in history as one of the greatest series ever played. If you look at any yeah. Swingin' D's website, a baseball person, a baseball writer, even just a baseball fan, right. if they if they bust out and rank World Series, the two that always end up at the top of the list are 75 and 91. Yeah. So that's what made 91 more special because it was so incredible. The dramatic games with the Jack Morris and the Kirby yeah. Puckett and the, yeah. and the Lonnie Smith and the... No, I'm yeah. so jealous. It hurts. When I interviewed Jack Morris a couple of years ago at the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, um, when Tony and Jim Cott went in, um, we we talked about '91, and and um, Jack talked about, you know, that's just the way he was taught how to play the game. Mm-hmm. He was taught to finish games. He wasn't never taught to throw six innings and then be done. Right. 
and look in the dugout and say, hey, take me out. Right. And that's the epitome of what he was taught, was that seventh game in 91, when Tom Kelly easily could have taken him out of that ball game at you know a couple of points, seventh inning on, and you know as Jack says, you know TK knew, just trusted me. He knew in his heart that I was going to finish that game, mm-hmm. and, and he did. It was just God, ten just, innings of shutout chills. baseball. Ten yeah. innings. You'll never see it again. Yeah. As long as you live, you'll never see it again. See one pitcher go 10 innings like right. that. Especially yeah. in Game 7 of the World yep, Series. exactly. You'll that's, never see That's it. what makes it so phenomenal. It was a seventh game of the World Series at home, a 0-0 game. Yeah, just Josh, uh, you, all, all parts of it. You and now our conversation is making quite a few of our listeners tear up right now. I? Oh, just for playing that? The audio okay, that oh, gotcha, you played. Gotcha. The audio that you For my money... It was when Kirby hugged Tom Kelly after yeah. that, after the home run in Game Six. It was when yeah. Kirby, when he hugged TK. That was a beautiful yeah. thing. See, she's the season opener, Randy Shaver. Yeah, and if if I remember right, there's nothing quite like did, the opener. Didn't, didn't both Atlanta and the Twins go from last yes. to first? Yes. In 91, they, they both were went last, worst to first. Worst to first to make it to the World Series, which again. Ah goes to show you baseball is one of those sports where anything is possible. I mean, truly. I mean, we sit here and we say, you know, the Kansas City won 56 games last year. There's no way they're going to get back to the World Series. Well, that's not necessarily true. You just Things, don't know. You don't know, and that's why you play, and that's why today's so exciting. That's why I love baseball so much because there, it's just the unknown. You know, so many different things can happen, and um, and today's the beginning of that. So. It is possible! Uh, yeah, thanks, KG. Shut up, Get KG. out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. We're not KG. talking about you, dude. Oh, love the God. guy, but that was so cheesy. That was the oh, dumbest. My <laughs> oh, my God. I love KG, but that was not that was not his finest moment. Uh, no. Eastbound. Verbal, verbally his finest moment. How about that? Eastbound at sundown, Jesus. Somebody's got to look this up now. Game 7, 1991. How many pitches did Jack Morris throw? I don't know the answer to that question. Someone's um, going to have to look you that You know, up. I thought I... I'm going to say... I'm going to guess like 119. 126. Okay. Somewhere <laughs> in there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You wouldn't even get close to that no. nowadays. And no. He, he had as no. much oh, gas boy. on that 126 yes. pitch as he oh. did on the effing first one. It's a shame. And, and, and the thing about it is, Wapple, it's game seven mm-hmm. of the World Series and it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Yep. That's what makes it so amazing. Yep. You can't even have your pitch throw 126 pitches in the video games these days. They'll be so fatigued. They'll be <laughs> yeah, lobbing exactly. meatballs. <laughs> you know what? That's it. Let's just... Let's just end the program and just play the audio from Game 7, 1991. <laughs> just play the whole game. Yeah, play the whole go. game. <laughs> some, play, so, we'll at, some, at some point during this baseball season, it would be incredible if we could get Jack Morris on some morning just to talk about, you know, his time in baseball, but that Game 7 in particular. I don't think I'd be able to get through it. You know what I mean? I, I, I You know, I've, I've talked to Jack multiple times about all of those things, and it, it, it it's fascinating you know it really is just not just me- necessarily that game but it's the mentality of that time yes. for pitchers yes and and i know we talk about this a lot that it's a different time and a different age of pitching and it definitely was there's no doubt but it, it just is incredible to listen to mm-hmm. um to you watch, know. to listen to everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was. It was. Like I said, you could live to be a thousand and never see anything like it again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you weren't there, you'll you'll never see anything like it ever again. Uh, interesting question coming in from Dairy Farming Sheet Metal, banging your mom, Jesus, asking about that game seven. We're going to keep going with this. Uh, you can't stop me. And if questions are going to keep coming in, I- I'll keep going until you vomit all over yourself. The question, who would have come in for Jack Morris if Tom Kelly would have taken him out? I believe I know the answer to that question. It would have been Rick Aguilera. More than likely, yeah, yes. Rick Aguilera. In a zero zero even in a zero zero game, 
um, that's probably the decision that yeah. they would have made. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Now, no, Aggie was used only in save situations, but that that right. was a totally different deal at that point. Now we can transfer this conversation about 1991 to today's Twins roster, uh, today's Twins team by, let me ask you something, Randy Shaver. I'm going to make a statement. Tell me if you agree with it. Royce Lewis banging out all those home runs. The, the Grand Slams? Yes. The in the well, It was a one-game deal with Toronto, right? How did that play out? Two games? I I don't it know the system anymore. It was, it was the best, best of three. three. So the best of three. did we just play two here and it was over? Is that yeah, how it? I yes, don't remember. Correct. Okay, they were all here. Right, right with yes. with Toronto. Right. Yes. Oh, uh, that's right. They were they were all scheduled to be yes. here. Yes. If it had gotten to a third game, it would have been a yeah, target field. They, they I, I apologize because I don't understand how the playoffs work anymore. But here's where I'm going with this. Let me ask you if you agree with this. Royce Lewis and banging those bombs into the upper tank at Target Field in the Toronto series. That was as close, as far as crowd noise and madness, yes. that was as close to 91. Just strictly on madness, the crowd, the, the losing your mind type. Yes. That was as close as it's, as it's come to well, we, 91. We Maybe said, you could go one six, game 163 with the Tigers was like yes, that. That was crazy. Uh, but I think Royce Lewis, that game or games, whatever it was, sorry, I don't remember, against Toronto last yeah. season, that was as close as it's come. I, I, would, I think we even said that uh, when that happened. Uh, when that happened, oh, we that, did. That was, I think we did. I think we talked about how loud it was in Target Field, mm-hmm. and that it hadn't been that loud for a Twins uh, baseball game yeah. playoff game since ninety one eighty seven. Can we so, find that audio? Can we find Royce Lewis banging out any of those dongs from yeah, that? Because that was incredible. That really mm-hmm. was what oh, that kid has so much potential. I hope he plays a full healthy. season. He just has to be healthy. Buck plays a full season. Yep. Yep. I mean, who was it? Uh, Royce Lewis actually was talking about Byron Buxton to some member of the media and put him on. Royce Lewis was talking about Byron Buxton, and he compared Buxton to Mike Trout. He's that guy, man. He can fly with the best of them, and we know how important he is to us, what a leader he could be for us, and the fact that he brings that speed and all these aspects to... I mean, he's an MVP player if he's healthy. Him and Mike Trout are very similar to me, except for Byron has the speed edge for sure, and it's going to be impressive to watch this year. I'm really excited to have a front-row vision of that. And some of you Buck haters, you know, there's so many Buck haters out there, and I can't stand you people. I can't stand you. They're mad at Byron Buxton because he gets hurt. You try it. It's not mm-hmm. his right? fault. You like, try it. They act like he does it on purpose. Here's the thing. We all know that if Byron Buxton is healthy, absolutely he could be Mike Trout. Absolutely. I've got some game 160, the, the walk-off. And the pitch bounce right side, base hit. Here comes Gomez around third. There'll be no play. The Twins have won the Central. Game 163. I was there. Who got the game-winning hit? Who scored Gomez? Go! That was uh, the little the Castillo or whatever is the yes. shortstop. Can't think of his name. <laughs> yeah, you got Alexi Casillas. Alexi Casillas. Yep. Uh, Sorry. I went. I think I've shared this story before with you, but I went out that night and I got drunk on Jager Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Which I never did. What are you doing, man? I was young. <laughs> the Twins just. Clinch the division. They're going to the playoffs to get okay. gassed immediately by somebody. <laughs> Whoever it was. when they, Who did they lose to the playoffs that year? Was it uh, Anaheim? I don't remember. Anyway. Three o'clock today. They start the season in Kansas City. Pablo Lopez is your opening day starter. I love it. Mm-hmm. Col- Cole Raggins gets the start for Kansas City. He was kind of a, a relief pitcher turned starter. He had only 12 starts last year um he's pretty good i mean this is a pretty good matchup to to start the season people are texting in now it's not my fault they keep asking about 1991 left-handed specialist jesus have you seen the big league network special the major league baseball network special on game 791 they sit down and watch the game with jack morris and john smoltz and they discuss this and that yes i've seen it it's terrific 
J- Randy Shaver, have you seen that? I, I don't know if I have. It's 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 from a number of years ago, but it's Jack Morris and John Smoltz talking about every little aspect of Game 7. It's effing fascinating. I'll bet it is. I'll bet it is. <sighs> <laughs> Remember, the Twins were down in that series three games to two, and, you know, um, we all know that they came back. They won game game six in 11 innings in that game. Right. Uh, so the last two games were one-run games, both extra innings that the Twins won, which, I mean, you talk about heart-stopping, and three of the four wins by the Twins were one-run wins mm-hmm. in that World Series. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, it was crazy. Here's a website called Athlon what? Sports, Randy Shaver. Yep. Athlon Sports. Very familiar with it. Oh, you are? Yes. Uh, they dump uh, what they call here a Twins 2024 season preview type of a thing on us, yep. and they, uh, they list five things you can count on. Mm. Okay. Okay. In the upcoming season. Now, if we can really count on all of these things, I'm going to buy my World Series tickets right the F now, son. Here's what they say you can count on. Pablo Lopez finishing in the top five of the American League Cy Young voting. I think that's a very real possibility. The Twins rotation surviving without Sonny Gray. The Uh, Twins. I'm not so sure about that. The Twins bullpen becoming one of the best in baseball. Carlos Correa and Byron Buxton remaining healthy. Royce Lewis becoming a super superstar. We can count on all these things. I, I, I don't think you can count on the the Correa Buxton part. Uh, I don't know if you can count on the bullpen part. To be honest with you, because they're so banged up right now, and we don't know what that's going to look like, and how soon they're all going to get healthy. Duran being the the most important one. Uh, with this oblique injury, um, so there, there's a lot. There's some statements there that I I don't think I can I can go along with at least right now. Yeah, I was thinking too, too many questions. What the hell? <laughs> I mean, having said all of those things, they still should win the division. When you look at how the division is is set up right now, they they still should win the division. Uh, <laughs> more text messages. Magic playing machinist Jesus. Which series was it when Juan Baron Care was sweating his ass off on the mound? That was 87. 87. Oh, Juan Baron Care. Boy, he pissed off the Detroit Tigers, didn't he? He certainly did. He comes out on the bump, strikes out. This is the 87 American and, League Championship and, and Series. He goes back, grabs his briefcase, and heads up to the clubhouse. Well, it was that little disco <laughs> dance that he did. Yes, you know? he, he, he did the little thing with the arms. Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I believe yeah. that was that game one or two in 87 ALCS, he strikes yeah. out Pat yep. Sheridan. I think I even remember it was Pat. <laughs> and he did this little disco oh, yeah. pump and, and the, t- the Tigers were thinking, we're going to oh. kick this guy's and they yeah. never did. Oh. Alright, Wapple grabs some Royce Lewis audio. Which one is this? So this is the first game of the two after, uh, so this game would have broken that uh, postseason streak that we had. The 18 uh. games. Okay. High fly ball, right field and deep. Springer back, turning, looking. See ya. He's done it again. Back to back home runs for Lewis, and it's three nothing Twins. Doesn't quite have the same pop no. when the local guys aren't behind it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you could hear that Iron Maiden concert type roar there in the background. I, I mean, that went on for about a minute too. Oh just, yeah. Just, yeah. They just didn't say anything and just let the crowd just go nuts. People as, as were. They should. People were. Here's a text message. I heard that Jack Morris's nickname is Cactus Jack. Bang, <laughs> <laughs> You can't get Wapple. No, you can't. He's on top of that. People try to get me at bar gigs all oh, the time. That's awesome. <laughs> that's hilarious. I'll be yelling a name and they'll be Cactus Jack. Bang, bang. <laughs> what is this now? I'm just trying to keep up with all these t- text messages. Uh, four before 34 Jesus. Gee, come on, man. Have you heard about the theory that the there was a guy at the old Metrodome who would run the fans, oh, right? Yeah, of course. Depending on if it was a yes, of course. Of course. They would hit the fans that blew out to the outfield when the Twins were at the plate. But when the <laughs> Twins were out right. in the field, they'd turn the fans to blow inward. So the ball, <laughs> yes, I've, yes, oh my God, millions of times. Yes, we've gone over those. Or piping oh. in crowd noise. 
A listener claims that they have a song on cassette tape, and the song is called The Berengare Boogie that oh, somebody yes. put together in 87. That is correct. I, I remember, remember the Berengare Boogie, but you got a cassette tape of that? I'd crank that in my garage every Saturday night. <laughs> I'd listen to the Berengare Boogie. Ah. The Twins' Bark at the Park ball game, scheduled for April 22nd, has sold smooth out. And it's really oh, wow. Dang it. I was too late on that one, too. Shoot. Do it. It should sell out. They should have been doing this for years, and they should be doing this multiple times a year. Mm-hmm. The folks over there at Target Field are too tight. <laughs> oh, that makes me They're sad. Too Darn it. Tight. They are. They're wound so tight. Uh. Loosen up. Yes. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun. Josh knows that that's Josh it's baseball. knows this. Yeah. It's supposed to be fun. Every fun. year, every year, the only real complaint I ever it's have about the Minnesota poop. Twins, <laughs> the only complaint I ever have is just loosen up the vibe around there oh, a yeah. little bit. Mm-hmm. A little, it's a little tight. dog poop once in a while. Some more, <laughs> some more mascots, some more dog turds, a chug a lug contest, nice. a bikini contest, whatever. <laughs> Do you think they'll put like a bunch of fire hydrants out around the complex? <laughs> <laughs> they they do have that kind of stuff. They, oh, there's like funny. relief stations. At nice. Saint Paul Saint, like oh yeah, we've done we've gone to the Saint Paul Saints one. That's I fun. went yeah, I yeah. went to the bark in the park at the Saints game once. I don't remember if they had pee pads laid out. It was just it was madness. It was just hilarious to see all these dogs. You know, some of them, the folks dressed them up. Some of them were fighting, you know. At t- <laughs> oh, the drunkest that. person I've ever seen was at the Bark at the Park game that we went to last year. This woman in front of us, and she was just kind of passing. She had two little dogs. She's passing them around to everybody. She's <laughs> funny. Very nice, me. very drunk woman. <laughs> Here's what I want to do, Wapple. If you want to go to that Bark in the Park game, I got connections. Don't listen to this. It's sold out. I know people, Wapple. Okay. I do think it's it's kind of crazy that the dog's ticket is more expensive. <laughs> what do you mean? What? The dog Dog ticket uh, was forty two dollars, and the human ticket was thirty four. Oh, so you have to get a ticket for your dog uh-huh. too? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, uh, are you only... sure that's not a joke? Yeah, no, no I'm reading I it on right the, now. the MLB website, and there's it's only there's only two designated dog areas, section one twenty six and one twenty seven. Oh, that's why. Oh, it's so sold you out so fast. Yeah, wait a minute, exactly. wait a minute. So you can't have your dog sitting in your seat with you? It, um, no, you can. That's but that's where you have to sit with your dog is in those oh, two sections. Oh, oh, yeah, you just don't send the dog them. off to its own section yeah. and then you come back and pick it up after the that, game. That would be hilarious just to see a bunch of dogs in twins jerseys yeah. sitting by themselves. I, I would love yeah. that. Well, wait, well, wait a minute. Not, All right, Fido. I'll we'll see you in the seventh. We're going to yeah. sneak out of here early today. And then you could call him the dog pound or something like that. <laughs> All right, now I'm aggravated. Yeah, so you're saying not everybody can bring their dog. There's no. a couple. What? Yeah, so there's, a, there's a lot of rules well, around it. That's freaking it. stupid. Well, yeah, if, if you think about the- it, it kind of makes sense, though, because you, if you have dogs in every section, that would drive people who don't bring their dogs nuts. Well, so they can go a different day. So well, then they can have 126 and 126. Yeah. 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 It's one game. And it's a Monday night game, too. It's not like this is a Saturday night game. Yeah, Again, they're, and, uh, they're so tight over there. So they're dumb. loose enough. They are. <laughs> Your dogs have to remain in the designated area, too. Like oh, you can't, come on. You can't right, walk from different it. hot That's dog it. stands. Too or many anything. rules. So dumb. Too many rules. That's it. I'm not going to this game. I'm going to get tickets to go see the Flo Rida post-game concert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go see Flo Rida. Oh, man. That's too bad. That's... All right, I, I didn't know all that stuff. Now I'm <laughs> aggravated because I was gonna. Wapple was gonna bring fire hydrants, yeah. and I was gonna bring your fire hydrant idea is cute. But what I was planning on bringing to that bark in the park game is just one cat and oh, turn him yeah. loose. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Just pull a cat out of my coat around the fourth inning and cut him loose. <laughs> it uh, says that they can, you know, they can reserve the right to refuse entry to any dog. How what? heartbreaking would that be yeah. if you got up there and they're like. No, nah, they're not cute enough. Sorry. Your, your dog's not barking the park material. <laughs> yeah. All right, Spike, you got to stay outside. I'll be back after the ninth inning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm aggravated. Wapa, let's go to the game in dog costumes. Just walk Ooh. around. That's not a bad idea. Bring a dog whistle. Get them all riled. Oh, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> You're, I mean, your girlfriend's got you on a leash anyways, Wapa. Yeah, you should no be kidding. used to it. Yeah, there we go. All right, you guys aren't going to believe this. Short. You're not going to believe this. I hope this is all legitimate. I just received a text from one of Juan Berenguer's children who heard us talking about the Berenguer boogie from 1987. 
This individual says, uh, my dad is Juan Berenguer, and we have a bunch of copies of that song. We bust it out and make him dance to it every year at Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's hilarious. No way. And they say I should record it. Listen, <laughs> tell your dad thanks for the good times. Thanks for the memories. And um, if you could possibly send us a copy of your dad dancing to the Berenguer Boogie, we'd be forever appreciative. I, I am going to have to try to remember this because Juan plays in my golf event every year. He brings Tony Oliva with him. Mm-hmm. They ride together in the cart. I'll have to remember to see if he'll do that. Oh, just at on the tee box? Yeah, at the tee box. <laughs> Oh my god. I was with a buddy who bought a car from Juan Berenguer. I was so starstruck. That's cool. It was awesome. A friend of mine years ago, you know, beer league softball guy, he shows up to the ballpark, you know, he's jacking down Steve Weisers, he's jaw jacking with his buddies, you know, before the game and he looks out on the uh, bump and the uh, the opposing team's starting pitcher is Juan Berenguer. And he turns to his buddies and he says, "Look at this." He said he'd never been nervous before for beer league softball, but by God, he was <laughs> on that particular night because yeah. Juan Berenguer's pitching. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, uh, Juan Berenguer's uh, child has gotten back to us and says, absolutely, ha ha, I will record it and send it in. Appreciate it very much. That's cool. And don't, re- don't forget, tell your dad the half ass Morning Show loves him. What else? Oh, my God. What else is going on around here? There's other baseball stuff we could talk about. Yeah. Because it is the opener for everybody. Oh, well, first we got a a bona fide hero in the Twins farm system. A Twins draft pick, a kid by the name of Travis Adams, saved a Fort Myers man. You know, that's where they play their spring training baseballs down there in Fort Myers. Saved a guy from a house fire while he was in town for spring training. This Travis Adams, Mm. he's in... According to the local news down there, a fire cut loose in somebody's house. This Adams is staying in the neighborhood, playing some baseball for the Twins. He runs into the residence and wow, saves somebody. You can tell this kid is young when you read his quotes. Uh, he can't he can't help he can't help himself with the likes, similar to what we endure around here from Wapple and Ashley. Uh, he said, "I ran and kind of asked if like." anyone was in the house and whatnot like no one knew and so me and the guy went to the front door and started like knocking on it and like someone had to break in the front window and like i think they knew and i was yelling and then he got the guy out of there i didn't know like how much of the house was on fire (laughs) or what was on fire Good for you, Travis Adams. A six-round pick from a few years ago. Uh, it sounds like he's going to be playing double A okay. this year. Bob Uecker at 90 years old is expected to broadcast the Brewers' home opener. He is. Awesome. I don't know if that's today or in a few days or what the Brewers' schedule is. But uh, it's not today. Okay. His workload for the rest of the season is uncertain. See, that should have been Dick Bramer, too. But congratulations to Bob Euchre because he's a damn... It'll be against us. Huh? It'll be against the Twins. Twins play the Brewers in their home opener? Yeah, April 2nd. F me running sideways. All right, more baseball. Of all the effed up ways to get in trouble, I'm going to try to act like I know what I'm talking about here. Three current and former minor league baseball players have been accused of insider trading in Del Taco Incorporated stocks. <laughs> hmm. So one of this guy, two of these guys, are, okay, one was property of the Colorado Rockies, the other two Tampa Bay Rays. They allegedly received advance notice of the acquisition of Del Taco by Jack in the Box, the fast food joint Jack in the Box. They learned from a close friend who worked at Jack in the Box that the company was acquiring Del Taco. And then they bought shares and sold shares and this and that. And they made... One of them made $56,000. Another one made $41,000. Another one made $64,000 because of this insider trading gimmick. You ever heard of something like that before? 
Ja. Åh. Oh. Mm. I think three guys that I went to high school went to uh, three guys I went to high school with went to jail for that. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Do you remember the kind of money they made? No. For a very short amount of time? No, there? I don't. Were they all involved in the same deal together? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if they were separate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, I never even considered that. Yes, yeah, Wapple. They were all in it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be, they ran into each other. What are you yeah. in for, insider? <laughs> what are you in for? Yeah. They, they run into the third guy. If you're here for insider trading, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> I am here for insider. Yes, see, we're all in, in on it together. Uh, gosh. Uh, one of them, two of the three, okay, yeah, two of the three I still run into periodically. One of them I haven't seen pretty much since high school. But one of them said the the benefit how should i say this he he looked very 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 old for his age he's one of those guys that just turned old quickly cuz they went to the cooler when we were in our 20s late 20s maybe and he just looked like an old man and so he said i've never been a big fan of my appearance i i i, I look so old i always wished I had a more youthful look, but he said it worked for him in jail. He said nobody said a word to him. They just figured he was a harmless old timer. Mm. Mm. So that was one situation where he was thankful that he looked like a 55, 60 year old man. They just, they, he looked. Hmm. You don't have to be a, prof- uh, you don't have to be a former professional athlete for this to be a funny story. But that's the situation here, a former professional athlete. A former big league relief pitcher was arrested for an alleged drunk driving incident last week, just 24 hours after being sworn in as a police officer. Oh, oh, oh man. Gosh. Uh, I think they're gonna take that. They're gonna take that one back. <laughs> oh boy. A uh, kid, uh, well, he's 34 now. Uh, Chasen Bradford, he spent a couple years in the big oh, leagues. Yeah. Oh, I never heard of him. I recognize the name. I think okay. he's a pitcher. Yeah. Yep. He's a reliever. Got hired as a cop, and then he went out and got a D-dub. Uh, he was swerving all over the road, the cops say. He, w- he ran into some medians. That's not good. Nope. Drove up on a curb. That's not good. He told the cops he only had... Okay, who wants it? A couple? Two beers. Two. And then he said he had five or six. <laughs> yeah, now that I thought about it, uh, more like ten. <laughs> 24 hours after being sworn as a... The Wolves were able to sneak by the Detroit Pistons last night at home, and with the win, the boys hit 50 wins on the season, and Randy Shaver, hell, they haven't done that in 20 years. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Rudy, what does 50 wins mean to you? I mean, this is the fastest team to do it in franchise history. It's a great accomplishment. Oh. You know, it's credit to the world that we've been putting in. I've been here like four years now, and I got, ain't got close to 50 wins. So, I mean, it's a little milestone, but, I mean, we still got to keep winning, get to the playoffs, and win there. That's special. I mean, from where this organization came to where it is now, that's been a long way. And uh, I'm definitely super proud of our guys uh, going out there and coming out that, that, uh, best way forward and, um, you know, competing and going out there. And, uh, you know, that's a, a pat on our back, but we're not done yet. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're not done yet. So it's Nas Reed. That was Nas Reed mm-hmm. and Rudy Gobert and Jaden McDaniels. Jade McDa- yeah, they got a win last night and they hit 50 wins. Nas had a had a nice game. <laughs> they, they, this was in doubt until about the fourth quarter. Yeah. About halfway through the third, they kind of yeah. took control. Yeah. Uh, their all-time best record. They hit 58 wins in the year 2003, then four. And up next, they got a huge game in Denver on Friday night. Yep. Yeah, two more games left with Denver this season. Uh, Draymond Green got ejected. Don't care. <laughs> he got multiple guys from the Warriors bench just coming over just to make sure Draymond doesn't go over the line here. The officials are kind of letting him speak and say his piece. He got another attack. he has gone. He just got ejected. With 24 remaining in the first, that's a huge blow in this type of game against this team. It didn't take too long. Don't care. The only thing interesting about that video is Steph Curry's reaction. He's, yeah. he's had enough. Yeah. He's had enough of this friggin' douchebag. Yeah. Like we said yesterday, he just isn't mature enough to handle this. Mm-hmm. 
The NCAA, uh, how do you say it, Randy? NCAA basketball tournament continues That's right. today. That's right. Clemson, Arizona. San Diego State, Connecticut. Alabama, North Carolina. Illinois and Iowegian State. Yes. Monster game. That's not till like 9.30. That oh, sucks. Yeah. Way late. Eh. Too late. Big Daddy will be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy. Yeah, Big Daddy will definitely be asleep. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Since when did you did you become Big Daddy? I've never heard you refer to yourself as Big Daddy. Well, maybe we should start doing it. Uh, give us a list of everyone who does refer to you as Big Daddy. I'd be interested. I that like it. A, that's a new State Fair t-shirt. <laughs> I like it. Big Daddy gonna be sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Who calls you Daddy? Or Big Daddy? Uh, well, my granddaughter calls me Papa. So, Big Papa. Not Big Poppy. No. <laughs> that was really cute. That was kind of sexy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Did not see it coming. All right. Uh, All right, Big Daddy, check this out now. Yeah. Ice Cube, who, of course, most notably in his entertainment career, played the role of Craig in the documentaries Friday, Next Friday, and Friday After Next. He offered Caitlin Clark, the uh, the gal that plays uh, Iowegian uh, basketball, he offered her five million bucks to come play in his basketball league. He calls it the uh, "Don't Tell Me." He calls it the Big Three Basketball League. Yeah, and she might be able to do that because it doesn't interfere with the WNBA season. She could still play in the WNBA, right? Yeah. She'd be playing against Dodes. Probably making a lot more money, right? Well, look at it this way. Oh, it says yeah. here the highest paid player in the WNBA last year was someone named Jewel Lloyd. Uh, she yep. made six hundred grand. But, I mean, Caitlin Clark doesn't have to worry about money. Well, not She's at rich, this point. and yeah. she'll be making all kinds of money with endorsements. But, anyway, this is an interesting like, offer, although some lady basketball players are pissed off at Ice Cube. They're saying, yeah. what, Caitlin Clark's the only one that deserves this offer? What about this gal and this gal and this gal? Well, Caitlin Clark moves the needle. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I will say this about Caitlin Clark. She's going to have to continue to be a great basketball player in order for those endorsements to continue to follow her. So um, when she makes the, the, the gets to the next level, the WNBA, um, I think she's going to be very much watched and scrutinized and She's going to have to play at a high, high level when she gets there in order for all this to continue. For her. I hear you, Big Daddy. That reminds me of Josh back when we used to watch Good Times. Remember, JJ got tied up with a pimp named Sweet Daddy, <laughs> and that did not go well. Did you see they're uh, coming out with a cartoon on Netflix, a Good Times cartoon? What? Yeah, they just released a trailer. Is James going to die in that one, too? Oh, I, that I, suck when James died. Yeah, I couldn't handle that. An Iowegian basketball player by the name of Patrick McCaffrey has reportedly entered that silly transfer portal. The oh, my God, part- he's leaving his dad? That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> the what? fun part of the story is that his dad is the head effing coach for the Iowegians. That's my- hilarious. Oh, my God. That's crazy. <laughs> Later, Dad. He doesn't, he doesn't like the coaching. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, he must have only one year left. Got one I think year he's left. he's a senior, yeah. One year left. God, that's hilarious. He wants more playing time. Oh, my. Well, maybe Dad said, dude, I, you know, I've got these guys coming in. Yeah. I can't guarantee you time. It says here, you know, he, he started more games a couple years ago when he was a sophomore, but his his uh, t- minutes on the court have diminished, and he's obviously doesn't put up as many points as he. He wants more playing time. Sorry, well, you suck. You know what? That's... <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Even the coach's <laughs> kids are transferring. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, actually, you have to credit the coach a little bit, right? Fran. Because, he, because he's not yeah. favoring his son. Mm. He's treating him like everybody else on the team. And, you know, thank goodness uh, for these guys who feel slighted that they have the transfer portal to jump into. So. Fran McCaffrey's fun to watch because when he flips out, he just gets yeah. spashed. He looks like a he, sock puppet. Yeah, he gets really red. Oh, too. he gets tomato red. 
The Pigs and Sharks play in St. Paul tonight. The game begins at 7 o'clock on Valley Sports North. Brutal game. This is it. They've got to have this game. They tonight. need wins. They do. Tonight, Wapple gets to be part of the Pigs' slow and painful death walk. Where is the visitation tonight, Wapple? <laughs> we're, we're the funeral at Wild Boar and Hopkins from 7 oh, to man. 9. We'll be out there with Coors Light. We'll be giving away wild sweet tickets, and it's for the last game of the season. We are gathered here today, you're going to say. <laughs> Dearly beloved. Oh, oh, my God. They need points. Cubby found an article from the Pioneer Press that says here, if the pigs are going to make the playoff, they have to up and make history. They'll probably have to run the table. Mm-hmm. Since, see if you can follow this, since the 82-game schedule started in the National Hockey League in 74-75, no team has made the postseason when down more than seven points with 70 games played. Yeah. The Pigs are nine points out with 71 games played. Yeah. It would take a miracle. Uh, you're, you're, you need, like, uh, Las Vegas to completely fall apart. And I don't think they're built that way. The mumps. So. You need the mumps to sweep through their locker room like that. <laughs> yeah. The mumps. Wasn't that what it was? Yes. Seven, eight yeah. Years? It, yeah was. it was. Yes. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. That was gross. Somebody infect the Knights with the mumps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's a long shot, boys. She is. It says here, the last hockey club to make a comeback, like what the pigs need to make, was the 1985-86 Hartford Whalers. I can tell you a few things about the 1985-86. You know, oh, oh, ooh. You know who played for the 1985-86 Hartford Whalers? The spray tan man, Dean Everson. Oh. (laughs) Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. (laughs) Well, they had was, guys. Was Gordy Howe on that team? No, that was after <laughs> Gordy came and went. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, they had guys like, uh, well, Ronnie Francis. Oh, Ronnie Francis. Um, With the biscuit and the basket. Yeah. Ray Ray Ferraro and Kevin Deneen and uh, Dave Babich and guys like that. Uh, Mike Leute, who I had beers with one night, Mike Leute. Remember the old goalie, Mike Leute, Randy Shaver? I don't. Oh, you don't? Oh, you don't. St. Louis Blues. He, Hartford. How, how do you spell the last name? L U I T. L U I T. By association with Mark Parrish many years ago, I it was uh, I, I I think I embarrassed myself because I was with Mark Parrish at a bar and he was already drinking with some tall, skinny, older gentleman. And Mark Parrish says, "This is Mike Leute," and I think I spit my beer on the guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. A spit take? Yeah, because I didn't recognize him. You know, I, I never right. knew what he. Sure. I said, "You're you're friggin' Mike." Le- Golden Gopher Dudes Hockey Club plays the University Ooh, of Nebraska. Starts tonight. Then in Sioux Omaha. Falls. That's right, Sioux Falls. Yeah. It's the 2024 NCAA tournament. It's do or die time. At least it's not Holy Cross. Uh, <laughs> oh, damn. He did it again. Uh, <laughs> game time, 7 One seed versus the 16. Oh, oh my God. Uh, Brutal. ESPNU is where you, if you got that channel, ESPNU. Also playing today and tonight, you got Boston University and Rochester Institute of Technology. I've never heard of that team. Oh, you haven't? Oh, RIT. Oh, oh, really? Is, how long have they been around for college? Oh, hockey? God, I couldn't tell you, but really? I. Yeah. Really? A long time? I've been a mainstay the last few years. I couldn't have tell they? you. Huh. I, I, I know that I've heard of them many times. Couldn't tell you how long they've been involved in. Maine oh. versus Cornell, Denver versus Massachusetts also play today. Keep in mind, the Final Four is here. So right. the Gophers have this incredible opportunity. If they can win two, then they can get back to St. Paul. So, Yeah, but Big Daddy brought up Holy Cross, and now we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not a Holy Cross situation, right? So, well, I know it was a yeah. 116 game. Yeah, yeah, sure. But in cahoots in Hamilton. That's where I was when I watched the Golden Gopher Holy Cross fiasco in cahoots. I had a better seat. I was actually there. Oh. I was there. You don't. It was, uh, it was brutal. You must have just been. Well, we had planned to be there for the weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we left the next day. It was, was just that, brutal. How was that locker room afterwards? Oh, it was brutal. 
brutal doesn't do it oh, justice. I bet not. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had a friend who got too drunk while we were watching at uh, in cahoots. And then we decided when the game was over, well, well we, we, we moved on to the YZ American Legion. And this one, <laughs> this one friend of mine was so upset that he refused to get out of the car. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It's so dramatic. He I, sat in his car. This is a, at, at the time, this guy was near 40. He sat in his car with his arms, <laughs> arms folded, folded over his Golden Gopher <laughs> hockey jersey, and he refused to come into or the bar. Not going in. Not going uh, in. Uh, I, I can honestly say nobody saw that coming. No. Nobody, no. because they, nobody gave Holy Cross a chance to win that game. Not at all. Oh, <sighs> there you f and well, go. Hopefully, they'll take care of business tonight. Yeah, I already forgot who they're playing. Oh yeah, Omaha, <laughs> Omaha, mm-hmm. Omaha. <laughs> Without Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a decent transition, Wapple. Here you go, NFL beat-offs. The in-season edition of NFL's Hard Knocks is changing. (sighs) Word is the show's format is changing from focusing on a single team to an entire division. Oh, for Pete's sake. (laughs) Because no one team wants wants to do it anymore. And a website called Yard Barker upped and said that the NFC North would be the best division to follow because of Jordan Love and Justin Jefferson and Dan Campbell and such. I I think that's too watered down. I, I guess I, I would lose interest in that. Yeah, because I like watching hard knocks to get yeah. in on like one right. player yeah. and learn right. about them. Yeah. When they did I, when they split the LA teams, it was kinda like that too. Yeah. With the Rams it just to be too watered down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ask me about CrossFit Jesus. Is this legitimate? RIT used to be RPI? That might be why I've not heard of this. Is that a factor? Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, by the way, RPI. They right. Had, they had some now, solid... Now them I've heard of yeah, in they, college hockey. I didn't know that RPI became RIT. Are you playing with us? Ask me about CrossFit Jesus. That's uh, that's fascinating. RPI. Yeah, and by the way, that, tell that, us about that CrossFit. Make, that makes sense, right? Yeah, because and tell us more about CrossFit, uh, Josh. When would a college says. hockey team just kind of come out of nowhere over the last few years? And In the mid-'80s, RPI had some really good hockey clubs, mm-hmm. and they wore the Cooperalls for you old folks. They wore the Cooperalls. All right, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I can't find it. Uh, it looks like RIT is its own thing. Yeah, I kind of think it is too, because oh. it looks like our RPI still has. Never a text team. us again. Ask me about CrossFit, Jesus. <laughs> I just, and we no longer want to know anything we about don't CrossFit. We want to know anything. Who knows? I don't know. We'll we'll have to get over it. All right, Randy Shaver. One more day tomorrow, and then uh, you're big off daddy the, uh, fights tomorrow. Oh, oh big oh. daddy fights. There we go. Uh, enjoy watching the ball game today, Randy. I will, and Can't we wait. will uh, talk to you tomorrow. See ya. Coming up next, if you have a question for a cop, go ahead and text us the number 65. Be be accurate, not like ask me about CrossFit Jesus. <laughs> text us 651-989-9393. Gordon Shank and Jill Frankfurth of the Minnesota State Patrol are in studio on the half Fast Morning Show next. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. What's up, folks? Anthony Armstrong here. Bob Pop, along with Super Bowl champion Carl Banks. Hey, NFL fans. This is Solomon Wilcox, former NFL safety and host of the Believe in Bengals podcast. Catch my show and all 32 Believe NFL podcasts. Listen in to former players give their inside perspective on your favorite team. Search Believe, that's B-L-E-A-V, on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast. It's always football season, wherever you listen. 
Minnesota State Trooper Gordon Shank. I called you to report a crime that I don't have nothing to do with. I'm not involved in the crime. I didn't perpetrate the crime. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah, here we go. Cops are here, Cubby. There they are. Here Good to see you guys. Here come the cops. Our guests this morning represent the Minnesota State Patrol. And they're willing to answer your questions at 651-989-9393. Welcome to the show, Gordon Shank and Jill Frank Firth. Hello, folks. Shank and Frank. You guys have to start a buddy comedy, yes. Shank and Frank. It's a good name. What's going on over there? Not a lot. How you been? I've been all right. How about you guys? Doing well. Terrible. Thought you could escape me. Oh. <laughs> back. No, no we, yeah, we're, we're glad to have you back. We haven't been so bad. Yeah, we thought maybe we were rid of you, but there you are. Oh. You look like you put on some weight. I did. <laughs> I like how quickly you answer. <laughs> yeah, you've really let yourself uh, go. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> I'm not. You both look wonderful. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in. We got questions lined up for you already. How'd you like that uh, scene a couple uh, nights ago, days ago, with the snow? That must have been fun for everybody at the State Patrol. That was good. I was out working with the troops a little bit. Oh, then, I, yeah, I bet you were um, pretty busy. Yeah, you know, I get a lot of ribbing when I go out and work because I'm usually in the office. So right. um, I just kept getting messages from troopers like, this is how you ride a crash. This is what you do. Um, <laughs> this is how you get in and out of your car, things like that. So That's fun. Very kind people. Yeah. They, they really like me over there. Yeah, you've mentioned before you enjoy coming in here because of all the terrible text you're sent by other troopers. Yeah, the, the text. The Demeaning memes. you, yep. saying, why are you doing this? You don't know anything that kind of stuff yeah and the memes usually or they they peak after i get on this oh do they send you memes and oh, stuff yeah. too yeah. ah that's fun was it a was it a, like a record setting mess out there was there a record setting amount of crashes because that was pretty brutal there for a day or so i think jill i don't know what do we have for crashes i didn't even look yeah it was close to a thousand if we look at oh, 48 hours God. dude yeah. that's a lot yeah i saw very quickly the uh, state patrol put out numbers like we've had 217 crashes already it was uh, close to a thousand i mean so a bigger snowstorm or decent sized snowstorm is that unusual to have that many or, or what, what would be normal quote unquote yeah i'm not sure what you know typically happens but we i mean that was a couple of days in a statewide event so yeah, every was, trooper was working hard so it wasn't a number you saw jill and were was shocked that's not it's and something you might expect that's a lot yeah. i mean there's a lot Seems of crashes, like a lot. but i think the issue wasn't so much the actual storm it was the days after because once people thought the roads were good, they were still slick. So yeah. That, that what what morning was that? Tuesday morning, Monday morning. I Tuesday can't remember. Morning, but Tuesday, Tuesday morning was All really right. bad. Really. And I, I remember there were semis that were sliding off the road. They couldn't get traction. They were getting stuck. Just things like that is uh, kind of what we continued to see out there that morning. That was a bad morning. Rough. <laughs> that was a keeper. All right. Do, like I said, yes, John. Oh, right, go ahead. I was going to get to some text. Yeah, that's exactly the direction I was headed. We got questions coming in for uh, Shank and Frank Firth here. A letter buck, Cubby. Steelers fan Jesus wants to know how long do you sit at a red light that's not changing? Uh, is if there's no cross traffic, can you just go if it doesn't change? There's an exemption for motorcycles in that, but not for cars. So you have to wait until the light changes. Sometimes the lights take forever, but they will change. Um, if there's an issue with the light. Uh, we'd recommend calling 911. As funny as that sounds, there could be a, a malfunction with the traffic control device, and in that case, either a like a MnDOT service, depending on where it is, or a city or county service, or a law enforcement officer would show up to kind of cycle the light, see if there's an issue, something like that. Well, why is there an exemption for motorcyclists as opposed to uh, motor vehicle uh, occupants and drivers? There's something in state statute specifically that says that at certain intersections where there's a light that they can go through after a period of time. And I can't remember the specifics on it, but there is an exemption for is that. Is that right? Well, I've heard different things. Like there's... Uh, it's like plates underneath the yeah, like weight issue. Yeah, yep. weight or like yeah, people have even text in magnets. They've I mean, I've heard all kinds of different stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I mean, and we don't deal a lot with lights as much as the city and county officials do, but um, there there are some highways that have lights on them, especially in Greater Minnesota. So um, case by case basis, see what's going. On. There could be a malfunction. We do get those from time to time where troopers have to go out and help with uh, traffic control at certain intersections. Mountain Mayhem Jesus said he bought tabs for his car online, hasn't received them yet. If I get pulled over, will I get a ticket for not having current tabs even though I have purchased them? A lot of times, I've seen this a couple times, so um, they're up to date in the system. They just have not received them yet, and we can usually see that on our side even though it's not on their actual registration at the time. Just make sure they have that document with them 
that shows that proof of purchase. But right. Sometimes it happens. I mean, um, DVS does a good job, but sometimes you know things get delayed in the mail and things that are out of everyone's control. So I would say have it, have that copy with you in case you do get stopped, so you can show that you have proof of purchase. Now there is a difference. Let's say you have them and you forget to put them on. That's on you. Like that's you're required to put those on if you have them. There's a. I think that most cops and troopers, deputies are understanding if you just haven't received them yet, but. If you have them, that's on you, and you can you're risking getting cited if you're not displaying current registration, even though you have it. Is that a pretty big ticket? Do you know? Um, I mean, maybe you don't pay attention. I mean, it's not it's not it's not a large amount, but it's there are no small tickets yeah, anymore. I mean, yeah. It seems like they're all pretty expensive. You, yeah. If you if you search online, you can go to Minnesota Payables, and if you search that, it'll show you the 2024 current payables for offenses, and really? on it, on there it'll show you the fees. For citations, do you so, cover you cover everything? It's I think a lot of them are on there, well, like, I, like even the, indecent exposure <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked at that one. Look that one up. Somebody look that up. <laughs> if I'm turning left at a stoplight in a left lane and there is traffic to the right, emergency vehicle comes up behind me. What do I do? Should I pull ahead? How do I get out of the way? This person wants to know. Do you want to take that, Jill, or I can take it? Doesn't Here comes anything. the emergency vehicle. I, I've wondered that myself. So let's say you're in the left lane. You've got traffic to your right. You've got a squad that needs to get through. <laughs> That's worst case scenario, right? I mean, yeah. you're stuck. So if you can try to move over a little bit to the left as much as you can, because I've seen that where cars are like, I don't know what to do. Oh, my God. So then they, they try to inch over a little bit. In that situation, you have them right there. I wouldn't cut across in front of that squad or ambulance or whatever, because that could cause a crash. So the best case scenario there is just kind of inch over as much as you can, try to make a little space if they're trying to get through. Um, it's really hard in rush hour traffic too, when you think about that and all the cars and troopers are trying to get through. Just do your best to inch out of the way as much as you can to your left. I know that could be hard if there's not a lot of space, but um, we, what we don't want is you cutting across last second in front of us as we're trying to get through, because we're probably thinking that car is gonna stay put they can't go anywhere. We're going to try to get around them on their right side. So that's my two cents. That's what I would say. But So don't go through the intersection? I wouldn't, you wouldn't turn? I wouldn't do that. I would not go through the intersection because they're probably trying to clear that intersection. And then if you enter that intersection at the same time the cop, deputy, trooper is, that could pose a traffic risk as well. I almost killed myself <laughs> getting out of the way for a fire truck many years ago. It was... Uh, and I swear to God, I saw the firemen laughing at me as they passed. I was on 169, fire truck coming up on my ass, nowhere to go, yep. pretty pretty heavy traffic. And uh, I was completely content to pull over on the shoulder, of course, that's yep. what you're supposed to do. Uh, I was so busy keeping an eye on the fire truck behind me in my rear view mirror that by the time I pulled over, I didn't realize that there was no shoulder anymore. Oh, boy. It had oh, been no. torn up. It was a construction site. <laughs> oh, you, no. like, yeah. well, I shouldn't say a construction site, but the road was under construction. I, my little drive down 169 turned into an episode of the friggin' A-Team. Oh, my. <laughs> because, I, I, like I said, I was paying attention. Okay, they're right up on my bumper. I better pull. Ah, ah! And, I mean, I swear to God, I saw the boys laughing at me. I was just going to ask, do you guys laugh at somebody in that situation? I, I go ahead. Well, I'm, you have I've, to. I've, I've, I've got you may have of, a few chuckles I here and there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. The friggin' fireman must have thought, this guy's nuts because I, I didn't really slow down. I mean, I was. Well, Josh, you were on a ride along, right, with Lakeville. Yep. Did, you, did you have any issues where they were going code to anything? No, or, nothing no? like that. Okay. By the way, do you want to say hi to Drew in the Lakeville Police <laughs> Department? It would make his day. Hey, what's up, Drew? <laughs> you know, at least that makes me feel good because at least I know one Lakeville officer does love me there, so that's always a good thing. Oh, yeah, right? you got a big fan. A real <laughs> big all you guys fan. did was sit at Quiznos all day or something, didn't you? <laughs> oh, it's been a while since I've been to a Quiznos. I love Quiznos. So your first time offense for indecent expo. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Indecent yeah. exposure in Minnesota is a thousand dollar fine and up to ninety days in jail. There you go. Mm. Worth it. Is it I worth love it? it. <laughs> worth it. I love it when there's a series of words that makes oh, Wapple boy. chew his lower lip off. <laughs> yeah. I dig that. A thousand bucks, you say? Yep. I'll split it days. with you, Wapple. I'll split it with jail. you. I, I was Can show split the jail time too. <laughs> oh yeah, did they let you do that yeah. with a good buddy? Take in, take out. <laughs> I was show steer Jesus has a question, and we get this quite often. Uh, and I believe you've probably answered it before. But um, wondering if radar detectors are illegal in Minnesota. He's read and found mixed answers on that. You want to take that, Joe? Detectors. Yeah, radar detectors. Yeah. Jammers are. Jammers are. Jammers yeah. are illegal? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a jammer? See, this takes me back to my high school days when everyone had a yep. damn 
radar, radar detector. detector on their dash. What's the difference between a detector and a jammer? So a detector, you know, that's just kind of where it beeps. Let someone know that there's there's someone running traffic somewhere. By traffic, we mean radar. Okay. A jammer, it is something that you get installed in your car sometimes, and it will basically shut down our systems to be able to run traffic, lasers, or radar, or anything. So you can't have those. Okay. Those things really? They, are Really? That actually illegal. works? That's some crazy. Of some of them don't, and then they end up getting stopped anyway, and they say, I have a jammer. How did that happen? Well... <laughs> Well, now we got a bigger issue. <laughs> <laughs> they incriminate that themselves? That's can, hilarious. Uh, Shane, can you tell that that's happening? Like, um, say you're, you're in your patrol car? Yeah, we've actually had troopers that have tried to, they've seen a car going fast, and we're trained that we can see cars that are visually fast. Like, you've done this job enough, and Jill can attest to that, too. You can tell when a car is moving sure. like, compared to everyone else. And our radar won't work. Our laser won't hit that car, and it will scramble almost. That's a good indicator for us. That it's that something is on that car that's preventing us from doing our job. Okay. Right. You know what? That actually, that's I got to give you guys credit for that. Police officers, credit for that um, because I've been on plenty of ride-alongs. Oh, real quick, do you guys kind of think people are going ride-alongs are dorks? Honestly, <laughs> no. I, I think for me personally, your I, face tells me something <laughs> different. <laughs> God dang it! I I'll let, I'll I'll let love Jill answer it. this too. I but know I'm a dork. I, not at all. For me, it's like, hey, this, is, this is a trooper thing, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we like to be alone. Yeah. We just do. It's nothing against anybody else. But when I was a, a troop that worked nights and they're like, hey, you got to ride on night. I'm like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Anything but this. Like, because you just like to be alone. Like, oh, and I'm the worst, too. What does that do? What does that yeah. do? What are you looking at over there? What does uh, that do? I don't know. What are your thoughts, Joel? No, I feel the same. You know, you want to go out and we're troopers for a reason. We ride in our squad alone. But. Now you got somebody sitting next to you asking these questions. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. ask all of them. You oh. feel like you have to entertain them? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, and then I, I find myself apologizing, like, well, you know, it was kind of a slow night. I'm sorry. But the last ride-along I did um, a few months ago, a buddy of mine wanted to go out, and this individual was puking everywhere in my back seat. Uh. And he's like, I did not want this at all. <laughs> no. I, I like very little excitement. <laughs> yeah, Well, enough. at least, but, Josh, you're done with all that, right? You're done with all these ride-alongs? Oh, yeah, until tomorrow I'm going with some, <laughs> going with some Minneapolis cop. <laughs> well, I'm, but I'm going at tomorrow. least it's, it's been a long time since you've done such a thing. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah, it hasn't. I mean, it was last Friday already. I, was, <laughs> I barely even remember that. Your brother's in law enforcement, right? Yeah, but I don't like being around him but i'm saying <laughs> what are have you asked him this question or he probably yeah, would tell are you they anyway dorks? does he oh, does your brother I, you know, i've th- never asked him actually I, i'm gonna i'm working on one in bloomington too but nice. no i've never uh <laughs> i haven't asked him that well look at it this way josh when someone emails a radio station and says can i sit in on a broadcast the first thing we we write back is what are you a dork or something <laughs> well because it's boring i mean honestly so this boring. is boring so well I, I was in the middle of complimenting you guys oh, that thanks. is impressive to me where you know the where it goes off the uh, little radar deal mm-hmm. And you can tell, like, oh, that's the one right there. Yep. I mean, that, you guys are really good at that. Thanks. Appreciate that. And that's really about it. That's, 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 yeah, that's as far that's as I can compliment. <laughs> All right. We were talking about the cost. Of, we, we got Gordon Shank and Joe Frankfurth in studio here from the Minnesota State Patrol. They'll take your questions, 651-989-9393. We were talking about the cost of citations. There's a website you can go to. You can Wapple found out that indecent exposure is 1000 uh, bucks. Real simple. Um where does all that money go? Local department or state? Uh, asks, uh, a listener asks that question. Where does the money go? I think it goes... I, I don't know all the specifics on where all the money goes. Christmas party? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that, Softball game? That's not it. So for us, we're and it's it's by design. We, we don't really look at what the citation amount is or anything. We just issue citations based on what we observe and mm-hmm. what we believe to be um, warranted for that specific individual. So um, where the money goes... I don't know. I don't. I don't ask that question. Yeah. Maybe a know. translator is making some bets for you. <laughs> <laughs> a bookie or something. Yeah. Fair enough. If I, I wouldn't care either, if I were you, you know what I mean. That's really that's not my problem. Where and, the hell the money goes? And when know? people ask me like, how much is a fine? I literally don't know. And I don't right. know about you, Joe, but I just tell them, look on this number here. They'll tell you what the fine amount is. You can obviously contest it in court. There's op- there's ways to take care of this. Then that's my that's my involvement. I'm done. Yeah. And I don't look it up after. It's I, that's just me. And no. I don't know what your thoughts I, I are. Totally get it this is an interesting question do, is, do you guys get some satisfaction when all of a sudden somebody is cruising and then they see you and basically slam on their brakes that's got to be kind of fun right yeah what do you think jill i don't i don't know if it's satisfaction but you know if you've made that attempt to go get them you're still going to stop them regardless so. yeah but just when they all of a sudden go oh no that's a trooper i've seen that so many times on the road i love seeing it 
just as another driver. I absolutely love that when somebody realizes there's a trooper in the median or something like that. I, I remember one time, and uh, this was before hands-free was a law. It was You could still use your phone in your hand at this time. There mm-hmm. was a guy that was tailgating me, and I was trying to go to a call. And so I just hit my, because I have an unmarked, I hit my rear lights to like say, hey, slow down. And at the same time, he threw his phone in the air and like jammed on his brakes. And that's one where you laugh, where you're like, oh my God. Like, so sometimes it's kind of funny when they do Well, yeah, that. you know you scared the yeah, hell out yeah, of yeah, it's gotta be awesome. Yeah, yeah so. Um, the average person can't scare someone like that. You no. scared the hell out of them. Yeah, no, but if they see us, they don't care. You know my motto around here, let's be dicks. <laughs> you know, be dicks about it once in a while. It's all right, everyone like, enjoys being a dick now and again. Here's a text uh, that says, um, Shank, do you have an OnlyFans? That's from Drew oh, in Lakeville. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Retired Army Air Defense Jesus says the $1,000 in decent exposure <laughs> ticket. That's not a fine. It's just a fee. <laughs> you pay, you pay that for the privilege of showing Wapple your private. That's great. It's, it's, it's not a, a fine. Fee. It's a fee. Minnesota State Trooper Gordon Shank. I called you to report a crime that I don't have nothing to do with. I'm not involved in the crime. I didn't perpetrate the crime. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Yeah, we got the cops in studio. And you can ask him a cop question. Gordon Shank, Joe Frankfurt, thanks for coming in. Our number is 651-989-9393. You can send us one of those cute uh, text messages. Uh, we got time for a couple more. You were talking about... Uh, fuzz busters, jammers, detectors, that type of a thing. How about a question about your cool-ass radar guns? A listener is wondering the accuracy of a radar gun during heavy rain, snow, or fog. The weather has a, uh, an effect on your radar gun? I can tell you this, that um, with confidence that it's going to be challenging because troopers are going to be responding to crashes. So we won't even need to do radar because people drive too fast for conditions. So we find them anyway because they crash. So um, it's not really a thing. We're not, I mean, it, it can, obviously, there can be some things that there's also another thing where if there's a semi like right on another vehicle, it can batch it, which ah. makes it look like you're going 140 miles an hour, God but you're dang. not. So um, it's, it, there are challenges with weather, um, but for us, like we're, we're usually responding to calls of service for people that have crashed from the weather. So, and it's not the weather itself, it's the driving Interesting. majority of the time. I, uh, I'd never heard of such a thing that the radar gun could be. Josh, on your ride alongs, when you're, you know, a total dork. Well, uh, I mean, they didn't officially say that, but go on. <laughs> do, do, does your, I do uh, feel like one. Does your partner let you hold the radar gun? No, it just kind of. We've. I've never been a part of it where my partner and I. Ha- they don't even let me hold the real gun, which is kind of lame. And I might write a letter to the governor about that. There you go. Uh, but yeah, it was just built into the car. Although I've seen a trooper tune it. Do you guys still tune those? Calibrate. Yeah, well, they t- they like to use a uh, tuning yep. fork. Tuning mm-hmm. forks, absolutely. Oh, isn't the, I thought the I thought I had the of, big word there. Beginning and end of every shift. They, oh, right? oh, it's both. Okay, yep. yeah. So, well, um, this guy, I'm gonna, I'd like to turn this guy in because he just did it at the beginning, <laughs> not the end. How do you? Were do you that? there for the whole shift? I oh, was. Oh man, <laughs> which I bet he loved. <laughs> <laughs> it was Zach. You know Zach. Oh yeah. Yeah, he used to ride with. How Zach. do you do it? Is it a complicated process no. to tune? They it? just go. They hit it and go ding, and then they tweak something. We have tuning forks with known speeds, basically, and so we we ding them as josh said and uh at the front of our car and then you put them up to the actual um radar itself and it'll pick up that speed on that tuning fork f if me you got your lying to me <laughs> we testify on this enough we mm-hmm. we make sure that this wow. is done right so. that's great 320 jesus has a cop question uh and uh which is perfect for this segment actually right. and yeah. i love the way he <laughs> ends this text but he says does it matter how fast you accelerate as long as you stay under the speed limit and then he says Kind of a douche question, I know, but thanks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, he wants to show off his hot rod for at least a brief period of time, huh? Do you want to? I, I can, t- but you can actually take that one if you want. I don't yeah. care. Thumb wrestle the, for it. The, the thumb, okay, let's go, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think uh, there's there's unreasonable acceleration, which yeah. is a thing. Um, and It's pretty awesome, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it does look cool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, if you're going, if you're trying to accelerate to get onto a ramp, Obviously, you're going to pick up speed, but if you're accelerating um, and it's unreasonable, let's say in a downtown on a city street, that's a problem, mm-hmm. and that's something that, um, and that even kind of goes to our street racing. Yeah, like that we're not going to accept it, and we're not going to allow it. 
and expect that if you're doing that specific behavior that you're going to get stopped by us and we're going to um, issue some citations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. Can you get a ticket for having a uh, crack in your windshield? That's a that's a that's a tough one because I think there was a ruling on this recently mm-hmm. where it has to I think it has to be able to obscure your yes, vision. Yes, correct. Yeah. So just a crack in itself is not. Um, it ha- we have to be able to prove that it, it prevents you from seeing out of that window. Right. I okay. Got that. And I got that's all stuff you know that we we teach at the academy and stuff. And speaking of which, Jill, you wanted to touch on that? Yeah, we have applications open right now for our LIDO program, which is that law enforcement training opportunity. L-I-T-O, LIDO, Law Enforcement Training Opportunity. Uh, you folks can get on a website. L-E-T-O. And, what? Yeah, L-E-T-O. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I spelled enforcement wrong. You did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a website folks can get on? Yeah, mntrooper.com right now through the end of the month. We're taking applications for people with no prior law enforcement experience or schooling. So we'll pay you to go to school if you have a two- or a four-year degree um, in any discipline. Yep. That's awesome. Jill and I both came from that route. Uh, highly recommend it. It's a great opportunity for someone that's looking for law enforcement, um, but they don't have a degree in it. It can be anything. Any what if degree. I just want a degree and then I decide at the very end, I'm leaving, I don't want to be a trooper? Has that uh, happened before? It does. Yeah. <laughs> it they, does. Do, they do what now? So basically they go through the Arlito um, opportunity. L-I-T-O, Lito. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, and then they decide that it's not for them. Well, depending on how far in they are, there's obviously, because we pay for their schooling, their skills, oh, certification. Jesus. So there's some cost <laughs> ramifications yeah. like that. But um, our goal is for that not to happen. We want people to apply and be happy with their decision and want to work with patrol. That's what we're looking for is uh, people just like us listening on the radio that are interested please, mntrooper.com. Um, I'm sure there'll probably be openings in my district. I'd love to have people there um, and so they can make fun of me with all the other troopers. Yeah. It's perfect. I got a question for you guys. This is just uh, personally, I'm curious. What's the, Jay, I'll start with you. What's the coolest car you've ever pulled over? Can you think of it? Coolest car. Mm. Ever pulled over like a, like a Ferrari or something like that? I, I don't think I've pulled over a Ferrari. Um, I'm trying to think of the highest speed I've ever had. I think it's about... 120, and I don't even remember what type of car that was. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> that's quick. I think I had a Lamborghini when I was on nights that I'd stopped. And sweet. I want to say they were drunk too. Really oh, not all, sweet. Yeah. And Is that kind of how it goes? Remember, where if they're jerk, yeah. you just want to say they're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Doesn't in. work like that. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> they were Hamburgini. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, did you mention this yet about the uh, the Lido project? If you're 44 years old, can you still be a cop? That's uh, El Gato Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I mean, I've seen people. I think in my program, we had somebody that was in their early 50s. Yeah, I had so, a guy that was yeah. like 51 mm-hmm. or 52 in my academy. and. Yeah, I mean... It, You're going to get a lot of crap from your partners once you graduate, I'd imagine. You're going to get a lot of old jokes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get a walker. Yeah, the <laughs> handicapped placards on their squads. Everything. <laughs> That's how you do it. Well, thanks, you guys, for coming in. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so good to see you. You yeah. know, next week we're having uh, Langer on. That's he's what good. I hear. Yeah, he's coming in next week to say goodbye. I forget, what's he doing now? I know he, right now, he's the... What you guys don't call it the chief. What Colonel. Colonel. He's a colonel of the yep. state patrol. He's yeah. the boss. Huh? Yeah, he's the yeah. big guy. He's the guy. And he's going where? He's going to the Chiefs of Police Association. Uh, yeah, International That's Association like the, Chief uh, of Police. Yeah. It's like that uh, that big building where the super friends used to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um, changing gears here, starting in April, distracted driving uh, enforcement. There's extra patrols for that. So make sure you're hands free. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was just reading about that on my way home the other day. I was, <laughs> an article popped up on my phone. <laughs> I was going to ask you if there was any special uh, showdown coming up. April 1st. Distracted driving month. Don't yep. be playing with your cell phone uh, while you drive. Cop, yeah. I got a cop here who texted and said the coolest car uh, they've ever stopped, a Saline S7. I looked it up. A Saline. I guess I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I've never seen one of these. Look at this thing. That's awesome. It looks uh, like a supercar. It almost looks like AI. Is that the term? (laughs) Or what's the term? Uh, You know, when they, like when you watch a video game, uh, when you watch a movie. Yeah, sure. AI. Yeah, it almost looks fake. CGI. CGI. That's where I'm going. That's exactly what I'm going for. Yeah. I had one of these cars in Midnight Club Dub Edition 3. Oh, you did? (laughs) Yeah. You had that car when you were playing video games? (laughs) Ooh, you can get a 750 horsepower uh, twin turbo in that thing. Hey. That would just come right from uh, out from under me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I, I crashed it the second I hit the accelerator. <laughs> I have no chance to. Uh... <laughs> me too. I couldn't handle something like that. No way. Thank you, Jill and Gordo.
Thank you. You yeah. guys uh, be uh, be safe, and we'll hope to see you soon. Please Absolutely. do. Yeah. yeah, take care, guys. Take care. Get well to our friend Maisie, who had to spend a few days in the hospital last week. Hope things are going good. Congratulations to Trucking Jesus and his lucky lady who got married March 19th in Vegas. Underwhelmingly optimistic Jesus texted in his amazing wife, Shmomo Jesus, a happy anniversary of 20 plus one years, and then said maybe he'll give her the old old face later. Happy 45th birthday to your driving me nuts, Jesus. Love your sassy wife. Happy birthday to TC Smoke Jesus from Sweet Melissa Jesus and Baby James Jesus. And this text says, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to my smoking hot wife, Bristly Burly Jesus from It's So Hard a Cat Can't Scratch It Jesus. That's right. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. 93X. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now.